Hello and welcome to Technocracy Zero Sum. We're back, baby. After an unscheduled break, uh, it's very exciting to be back here with all of you. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. Sleepy, but good. <laughs> Sleepy, but Sleepy. good. Yeah, that's yeah. of life. Good. Yeah. Other than the fact that I've got super glue stuck on my fingers. Oh. Luckily, I did I not glue my fingers together, though. I almost Yay. did. It was very close, but I pulled them apart in time before the glue fully set. I'm so proud of you. Good, good job. Good job. Yeah. Good I job am very happy going. about this because that would have been painful. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we are we are back. Uh, we are, however, uh, taking a little bit of a break after this episode. Uh, for at least a month, possibly two, we'll talk about November as we get closer to that and see how things are going with Robin and the harvest and me and plotting, uh, because that is another consideration. But uh, we wanted to wrap up this little bit of storyline because it's um, it was just getting interesting. Let's put it that way. Right? It's true. <laughs> right, gang? I still don't yes. know what happened because last episode I wasn't here. Or were you hearing that long? So yeah. Someone, someone uh, had their seeking. Amy? Someone did. Intrigued. Fancy. Yes, which will get put up eventually along with uh, Tegan seeking. Um, I just haven't had time to edit any of those things because I've been busy editing Dark Pod. So. Which I appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> we love and appreciate. Right. right. And I mean, I'm enjoying editing that. I'm just running out of time because time's a thing and i mm -hmm. have two sca events i'm heavily in the planning of this month that are right back to back so once those are done and i get dork pod episode three done this month then i should have a little bit more brain space and time to get some of those other things done nice. which would be good would be good but yeah yeah uh sophia wasn't there last episode um so we get to we get to see what sophia was up to at the time um yeah yeah this is gonna be good that reminds me I all right need dice right you probably need dice i probably need dice no oh. i mean if you want to roll things <laughs> i always like don't. to roll things all right <laughs> roll all the things right 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 okay I've got dice, I've got notes, I've got players. All sorts of stuff. I've got players. I've got all of my lovely players. Before we begin, I will do a bit of intros and then a bit of recap. Sound good? So, Sounds great. as noted, I'm Jen, I'm your storyteller, and I use she, her pronouns. And uh, I don't have a character because I play all the other characters. Uh, Kelly. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly. I play uh, I play Dr. Nolan Westcroft, who is a very sane individual who you should invest in immediately. Uh, thanks for being on pa on Patreon, everybody. I appreciate it. I normally am running games, but this time I don't get to. It's nice. Indeed. Right. Uh, moving on to Christine. Hello, I'm Christine. I use she, her pronouns, and tonight I play uh, Sophia Smith, our progenitor damage control. Pharmacopoeist. And I have to try Indeed. and remember her voice because I keep forgetting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's been a it's been I a minute. There's uh, quite a few instances in the last few games where Sophia was not speaking like Sophia. Mm -hmm. Which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Amy. Oh hi, that's me. Hi, I'm Amy. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them, and I am playing Heather Anderson, our uh delightful void engineer of the earth frontier division who definitely likes technology more than she likes people fair enough i think technology likes her more than lots of people like her too so that's also <laughs> correct <laughs> fair enough and last but certainly not least i was gonna call you tegan but hey robin <laughs> hi uh i'm robin i use she her pronouns and i play tegan warner our Iteration X biomechanic who uh, is a little bit of a uh, she's a reformed 
cyber junkie kind of she's she's learned a lesson about maybe wanting to become fully cybernetic but she does use her she has an eye for technology <laughs> um yes yes uh the, the puns are great guys i know uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, I'm super excited for game. Uh, it's it's been a few few months, so it definitely feels Tegan feels a little bit unfamiliar. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting back into this because shit was happening in weird halls and doors, and that Tegan doesn't understand what's going on. She's very confused. <laughs> That's fair. It's a very confusing place you're all in, and um, yeah. Well, we'll do a. Huh, yeah, reformed. She she did learn a lesson because uh, she had her seeking. So she learned a bit of a lesson. But to do a quick recap, since it's been a little bit, uh, you all were graciously invited upon uh, or into the Pleasure Dome or um, Balador, as it's also, also called, by Mariana of Balador herself. And she let you all come in and assured your safety nothing will happen without your consent here and Sophia uh, the way you kind of uh, came in and then went about your own devices was you dragged Mateo in who was his still catatonic kind of dropped him at the floor and, and insinuated he needed some healing and then left <laughs> that was you were like I don't I'm not here for this um, so you were heading back to the ship last uh, last episode. And you all decided to go and explore a little bit, get some food, maybe rest a little bit, and eventually all got split up because this place you're in wants to give you what you truly desire. And that wasn't the same for everyone, which makes sense. Tegan had some fun adventures in uh, in one particular area that she might now be regretting because of discoveries made later. <laughs> yep, yep, we're remembering now. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I I definitely was in a sex dungeon with now zombies or something like that. Christine, well, that's what you missed. You missed. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. And <laughs> uh, I love when players, I mean, I do this in Kelly's games, but when you remember and your memory is jogged, it's just like, oh, oh, right. The terrible things that were happening. I remember yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, oh, great. Oh, great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I forgot about yeah. the decisions I made. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Heather went wandering around and found a room just full of primal energy and started carving tasks out of, out of the furniture. <laughs> and a bunch of rocks. And just a bunch of rocks um, that later when, when Tegan found her again, she held up very pleased with her discovery and Tegan thought she was insane. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a good time. Uh, Nolan on the other hand, ended up back in his old apartment, one that he used to live in. Yep. And uh, he had a guest, uh, Mariana herself, who was offering her, uh, offering him a, um, well, everything he could desire, of course, hmm. should he wish it. He chose to jump out a window instead. <laughs> because i'm sensible yeah. that way because you're sensible, sensible that way yeah yeah um and as he was falling uh ended up having his seeking because decisions were made <laughs> and when one is falling forever that seems like a good time to do some soul searching i think yep, i hope you say the line when we get into game kelly <laughs> you'll have to listen to my seeking to hear if i said it <sighs> oh. yeah and T 
Tegan and, and Heather went searching for... <laughs> yes, I've been falling for 30 minutes. <laughs> Forever. Um, Tegan and Heather went searching for Nolan and uh, Mateo because Mateo had kind of vanished. <laughs> No one really remembered that Mateo existed. Um, you didn't find Nolan, but you did find Mateo, who had been floating kind of face up in the infinity pool, actually conscious, um, looked a little better than than he had been, and had an interesting scene, which when I rewatched it to to remember this recap and, and to remember jog my own memory about the end of the last game... I hadn't been listening to the music at the time and I had forgotten that I had told Kelly to put it on just club music on a loop and club music with a very tense conversation was the best sort of disconcert. It was great. <laughs> it was great. It was wonderful. It was just like oh, having a serious talk. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was, yeah, it was beautiful. Beautiful indeed. And... So you talked to Mateo, found out that maybe something had happened to Mateo on the way through the dimensional anomaly, and maybe Mateo didn't have a genius anymore, or something had happened to it anyway, and you weren't entirely sure what, but uh, you both tried to convince Mateo that the science and technology of the technocracy was was the way forward and Mateo wanted to believe in hope instead and perhaps some sort of magical miracle that Mariana might be able to give him in any case he suggested you go look for Nolan and uh, off you went uh, right before that I did forget that at one point you were looking through some rooms and um the inhabitants of the Pleasure Dome started moving towards you in a potentially zombie-like fashion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thus, the uh, the concern over over Tegan's uh, adventures. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Have not confirmed they're zombies. They just seem to look like they were walking like zombies. I will point. Yes, out. I. I also believe that um, Heather threw up life sight and found mm -hmm. that they had no life pattern. So that's why Tegan got a little <laughs> concerned. Yeah, there, there is that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there is that as well. No. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All good. Yeah. All fine. It's fine. Totally it's fine. fine. This is fine. This is fine. Absolutely. And. The three of you were heading off to go find Nolan at that point. Okay. We're going to start with Sophia, though, and see what she was up to. She drops Mateo off at Mariana's feet and turns and heads back towards the ship, basically. Um, probably, probably to do something in her lab or just doesn't want to be in a place called the Pleasure Dome. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't want that. <laughs> well, and I mean, also there's a, the part of like, these are generally the people I'm supposed to be dealing with, not putting up with. Or at least dealing with all the mess. So yeah. my trigger finger might be a little itchy. Fair enough. Fair enough. This is for their safety and yours. <laughs> Because I am practical enough to understand that we are in a situation where we need to take what help we can get. and that, But that doesn't necessarily mean that I can um, get past years of training and whatnot to uh, not react quickly to what they might be doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you head back through the main doors that you come into from like the the hangar bay area and can you give me a willpower check roll your current willpower difficulty six. Oh, current willpower huh yep oh dear 
Uh, that's two successes. Okay. Okay. Not difficulty six. Nice. What is Sophia's kind of plan or current desire? Conscious or not, I will say. Um, well, I think a conscious desire would be to figure this out mm -hmm. and get out of here. Mm -hmm. Is like what what she is working towards is what what's going on. Unconscious desire might just be, oh god, she wants to sit down and forget what's happening and have a coffee and not like be on for another 24 hours. Fair enough. As Sophia walks through those doors, she walks into the hangar bay and the ships there there's people working on it uh they're they seem to be some of them are working kind of towards the back of the ship on on the engines and whatnot but the stairs are still there leading up to the ship and it doesn't look like anybody's coming in and out of the main door of the ship they're just working on the the outside from the looks of things all right she might go to her infirmary space Mm -hmm. and hide out in there pretty sure yeah. she's probably because i mean she was creating stuff so i feel like she might have some gear there where she maybe has put one beaker aside and that's the one she can make coffee in <laughs> if she <laughs> just make yep. dirty coffee <laughs> yep yep no benefits of machinery <laughs> fair enough yeah sophia makes some coffee it's quiet you're really enjoying how quiet it is, actually. Um, you can kind of hear the noises outside, but as you enter the ship and kind of close the door and then close your infirmary door, it blocks out pretty much all of the sound um, from the workers. Yeah. Which, can you remind me, what happened to the hip mark? Whatever oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the body is still, <laughs> still lying the there. Still lying there, yep. Is it living? Would you like to check? Yes. <laughs> you can either give me a intelligence and medicine roll, or like to do things like check pulses and stuff like that, or you can give me like a life sight type thing. It does have living parts, so you, you're pretty sure you can figure this out as if it were actually living. <laughs> I feel like I think she would just kind of like save that and just try doing like she's gonna look at it carefully to like from a distance look and try and figure out if it's got like actual lungs and thus mm -hmm. could be breathing and thus movement potentially even if it's maybe trying to fake it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, give me like like an into medicine or something, like suggest something if that is not a high <laughs> role for you. Difficulty six. Medicine. Cool. Uh, let's do successes. Nice. Yeah, you stare at it good and hard and you're like, are you breathing? And what it looks like is, because if I remember correctly, uh the end of that fight um it's uh chip had kind of like mal malfunctioned and melted or something had happened to it um so the body is not breathing that you can tell you you do think that it would be breathing if it were alive and you're pretty sure it's not breathing and therefore not alive excellent It might take a while for it to decompose potentially or could be very quick. Yeah, it looks like it's not 
decomposing quickly or anything, or it's not, and it's not like turning into slag metal. It's not, nothing really Maybe seems to be happening. Maybe the technology has a way to like keep those in fairly good shape so they can be like recovered and then yeah. redone with a minimum of work. Pretty much, yeah. All right, so for in the meantime, she's gonna like thoroughly zap strap. Like, you know that the whole like lacing the arms together shibari thing? She's doing that with zap ties. So that cool. even though it could break that out, she will hear it happen <laughs> if somehow it has fooled her and comes back to life. And Fair she's gonna enough. do the same to the ankles, to the knees, and like hog tie it with zap straps and then put it Basically in the corner using... and go back to work. Yeah, three million zap straps more than would be necessary on a human. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, cool. Cool. Play. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you just shove it away somewhere. I think so. Okay. And then cool. she might actually, from there, if she's kind of had a look at her infirmary, maybe cleaned up a little bit. I think uh, she might start wandering the ship slowly to kind of poke her nose in without the distraction of the others. Yeah, okay. Just kind of investigate herself a little, get a little more settled, and kind of maybe try and keep an eye on what's happening outside, if there's anything weird going on. Sure, yeah. Um, Just give me a couple of, like, either wits or int and, like, investigation or perception. I would love to use wits. Something. Would my one step ahead sure. um, yeah. thing count? Yeah, sure. What? Let's do that. Specialization, that's what it's called. That That's what it's called, yep. We're yeah. remembering how to play. Words. <laughs> words. I know words. <laughs> um, I'll do wits and investigation. Cool, if that yeah. Works. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, difficulty of, let's say six. Okay. Uh, five successes. Nice. Uh, and give me a perception and alertness check as well difficulty of six perception and alertness alertness uh, ba, 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 ba. two successes nice perfect okay you start to wander the ship and a couple of things I just saw her chat, sorry. <laughs> yes, I bet you she would do that if it was long enough time. Not not hugely, not a lot of effort, just like maybe like a hat. Yeah, it's they the were asking dress if I keep hit mark in the closet and thus dress it up each season to match. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of, of similar to like the twelve foot skeleton people would keep in their yards and dress That's up. Exactly what I was wearing. Sure just I keep the metal that. skeleton. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Oh no. Um, <laughs> Nobody screws with me in my lap. <laughs> Not with a skeleton towering overhead. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, so so you shove the hit mark into like a uh, one of the closets near the infirmary and you start to wander the ship and a couple of things kind of catch your notice. Uh, one is you're down in that area that you, the wall exploded from and and the uh, the device was in there and it was filled with other pieces of what kind of looked like junk, but also there were maps there. There's a couple of hard drives as well. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here that from when the rogue was the Nautilus and uh in the quiet of kind of waiting here for everybody to be done with whatever they're doing in the pleasure dome and the ship to be repaired, you could spend some time going through it, um, or you could continue to wander the ship. I am okay with either idea. Um, so I guess direction from the storyteller, how awful would it be to make make you go through and come up with stuff to come from that room? Or do you have stuff if you want to drop just from um, that room? Because both ideas are very feasible for her. I'm unfair. So uh, I don't want to make you like sit here and come up with what she finds. 
on the fly yeah um, of no, interest but if you want to drop some lore potentially that you've come up with then i am happy to go through boxes i'm also happy to go on to the ship whichever makes some more sense fair enough i appreciate you <laughs> um there's not a lot that i can drop that i didn't already drop with with tegan getting a bunch of data infused in her head from Kibo okay. <laughs> from Kibo and the uh, uh, fractal but um, because I think a fair amount say... of like that she would have there yeah. was a probably enough conversation between all of them whatnot that th there's more than I necessarily remember yeah. that she yeah. remembers and thus yeah. and she was there also flicking through stuff at one point helping to find stuff yep. um, so I think she would have probably had a certain amount of sense of what she's seeing as she goes by yeah um so what i'll say is that you you're like oh right this stuff is here i should probably look at it a little more closely and maybe you are like okay these boxes are hard drives and we'll just give them to tegan to go through or or heather to go through later um you so know a little this bit box. of sorting a little bit of maybe hiding from anybody who might come on the ship that's not us yep. Yep, a little bit of that. Um, and eventually you get a little, like, bored of this. You're like, okay, maybe I'll just stretch my legs a little bit more and continue looking through the ship. Um, you haven't heard anyone come in, so not that you'd necessarily 100% hear it down here, but you're pretty sure, based on how quiet the ship is, that you nobody's come, nobody's opened that door. Like, you haven't heard the the influx of sound from outside. I feel like Sophia probably has a certain amount of just figure out how to get shit done without using magic sometimes, or technology. So if she kind of stops and thinks for a minute, like, hmm, I haven't heard anybody, but I might not. She's gonna like set up a stack of cans, like right inside the door. <laughs> So if it does get opened, it's going to get knocked over and go. Yep, absolutely. I love Sophia. She's going to uh, have the Jack the Ripper warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so you you get some of that set up. You start wandering the ship again, just poking your head into places and remembering bits and pieces of what has happened since you all woke up in space on this place in this place walk into the mess hall and you kind of have a flash of oh yeah and Mateo just lying catatonic on the table and um Nolan handing handing him like a, a llama laced with <laughs> with drugs and you I think she probably well, also realizes that she lost track of where that llama went yep <laughs> she didn't see it disappear she did not and with that five successes on investigation Sophia is going to open a door and rediscover what I have been affectionately referring to as the corpse closet. All oh, right, the place <laughs> where she stacked all the dead bodies. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about them. Uh huh. They've just been there. <laughs> huh. The, well, I guess you might as well check over them for identification and like stuff like yeah. that, and starts processing them. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Um, Sophia doesn't sure notice as much. Has something like dog tags. Yeah, yeah. Sophia doesn't notice as much, but when you open the door, it does smell like death as you <laughs> like walk in. Sophia's just like, uh -huh, oh, a normal work day. Yeah, pretty much. You go through and you start processing them. You start pulling dog tags and other identification, and you you match up. Uh, faces to to id and stuff like that and it's simple it's easy there's 
they all had some form of identification on them. They all, like, the damage that was done to them was all internal or spiritual or whatever you want to call it. But there's nothing really marring their outsides. They just look like they're sleeping almost. Well, and it I hasn't guess been. If we get back in any sort of time for them to not have decomposed too much, their families might get actually get something back for a funeral. It's true. If they have one, of course. Yeah. Yeah, if they have one. But, uh, but yeah, it hasn't been long enough for them to really start decomposing. They just smell like death. It's just that, that first little uh, bit of, hmm, yep, it's a bunch of dead bodies in this room. And it was closed for a while, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would a technocratic submarine have a morgue? They have a Glade plug-in. Best I can offer. Because <laughs> I was thinking, like, what do they actually do on a submarine if they have somebody drop dead? Yeah. Um, they, they have somewhere they stick that <laughs> to keep it honestly, to the surface. Honestly, if, because they probably don't expect a lot of people to drop dead all at once, um, they might. I, I don't know for sure, but they might leave them in like the infirmary or something. Gross. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you also think that maybe you might be able to find like a storage area that you might be able to seal off and just controlled. yeah something like that maybe you might have to ask uh one of the others about uh the ship's controls and and what you can actually do but it's, it's possible that you could find a an area that's that you're not going to use and that you can kind of climate control to cold enough to keep these these bodies on ice basically yeah. without throwing them into space <laughs> yeah i just saw amy's comment of freezer and i was like yeah she totally put some in the freezer with our food just to shock the next person who opens it <laughs> like what amazing <laughs> but no no I, th I think she's a little more like focused on hygiene than that <laughs> So she might just try and ask the others to see if there's a way to climate control one of the rooms without, like, somehow, like, shunt it to just that closet instead of another. Yeah. So maybe it stays separate from the ventilation system so we don't smell eau de corpse for the rest of the trip. Yeah. Or or have However to make the decision about be. whether you, yeah, whether you toss them space into space them. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or incinerate Pretty them much. or something. Yeah. There's probably a couple of options you have. Um, I mostly just wanted to remind everybody about the corpse closet. <laughs> How can we forget, we forget about the corpse yeah. closet? <laughs> I had forgotten about the corpse closet and I created it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, Gross, Amy. Gross. <laughs> she's not wrong. <laughs> I feel and like now we maybe raid this pleasure awesome. dome first. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's way too early to turn to cannibalism. <laughs> Way, Way too, too early. early. It's been like a week. <laughs> we can't decide. It. They're gonna spoil before we get to them at that like point. Six, we well, I hate to break it to you. You're gonna find out that there's Freaker. zombies in the Pleasure Dome. So you know they're our best <laughs> option. <laughs> um. Well, if there's something that creates zombies, then maybe they should uh, get burned so that they can't become zombies. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. With prejudice. <laughs> the living impaired. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sophia put a bunch of cans in front of like the main door in into the place, right? Yeah. In case anybody came in, uh, you hear those topple over. Dun 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 dun. Uh. <laughs> and she's gonna go sneaky. And be like, can you go sneaky? Cool. Uh, give she's me Dex's sneak stealth. and figure it out and hide the corpse closet again. Yeah, fair. Stealth roll. Uh, difficulty six for ducks and stealth. Ducks and stealth. I am not the most sneaky person out there. Difficulty six, you said? I did. 
One success. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you sneak along and you're really not making lots of noise, but also without the, like, without any sort of engines turned on or anything like that, it's quite enough that even your footsteps are a little bit echoey. And so the person that you come across is not terribly surprised, except for the fact that they were surprised by the cans being there. And it's just holding like a crate. And it's just this young looking guy and he looks like startled. And he just looks at you and goes, sorry? What you doing? Oh, we, we were told to help resupply. This is food. Ah, all right. Mess is that way. Thank you. <laughs> He's just going to go like. Seems a little bit uh, anxious, perhaps <laughs> about being alone uh, on a well, on a tech technocratic ship in theory um but also with a technocratic agent wearing a black suit (laughs) yeah (laughs) and also just knocked over a bunch of cans which is like why are these here um but yeah if he actually says that out loud (laughs) she will try and come up behind him and go and give him the reasoning for it i i think as he's leave like heading towards the mess hall he's like hands <laughs> now if he's kind of focused on that mm-hmm. this is a thing that I do sometimes to people by accident where you just kind of arrive next to them and your head's right next to their head from behind and they don't realize you're there because they didn't hear you coming and you didn't try too hard to get to that point I feel like she's going to try to do that and just yep. go inexpensive alarm system I could hear that across the ship. Okay. Uh, you say that, and before your second word is out, you you have the time. It's it's a little bit slowed down, so you have the time to actually say what you just said. But as the second word comes out, you see him flinch and move so fast away that he slams into the sidewall (laughs) and drops the crate. Ah! Careful. God, you're scary. Did anyone tell you that? Not really, no. They definitely don't have time after I've killed them. (sighs) Picks up the crate, just keeps walking. It's all right, you're feeding us, it's okay. Just walks faster. (laughs) She's gotta get her entertainment somewhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love it. She's gonna look a little happier as she walks away. She's gonna try and mentally keep an ear to kind of where roughly she's hearing the sound of him walking. Yeah. Just to kind of mentally keep subsection part of her brain to paying attention to what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he walks to the mess hall, uh, drops off the crate, walks to the door, opens it, picks up another crate, walks back to the mess hall, drops off a second crate. And then he leaves. Right, so while he's walking back, she's going to make the time to get over there. Mm-hmm. How, like, are these, like, nailed together wood crates or, like, plastic crates? Um, yeah, they're nailed together wood crates, but with those, like, handles on the side. Can I, like, life magic scan them? Yeah, sure. See what's in them? Yeah, give me an Arate check. And and let me know what you're scanning it with. I'm trying to decide. I feel like... Life might give me an idea, but... Of what's there, if it's, like... Previously growing matter versus... Metallic matter? Maybe? Yeah. It might be more matter, but or just look at it with prime. (laughs) See if there's anything active going on it. Yeah, and I mean you could um you could do the separate effects. You could try and 
you could being a technocrat <laughs> and being that you probably have some sort of device that is your scanner basically you could combine things into one site like it's just scanning for all the things it's just a slightly higher difficulty because you're adding spheres but okay yeah my thought is just like scan just to be like make sure they've not hidden anything in it that immediately pings so it's worrisome yeah yeah sure um, it is in fact yeah. food yeah uh give me that Arate roll or uh, enlightenment roll. Sorry, mm, mage. Yeah, if my mage sheet says Arate, so I will always think of it as that. Fair, yeah. Um, and that'll be do, do, do. Uh, difficulty six. Two successes. Yay! Yeah, it's um. You see what you'd expect to see in a food crate essentially there's nothing i'm gonna say uh actively uh set in there or anything you see there's some fresh food but there's also some what you'd think of like space food like in okay. weird packages um like but there's some fresh the yeah there's there's some fresh food in there um in this crate, mostly things that don't need to be refrigerated per se. So there's like, um, there's some fruit that, you know, you could leave out like apples and stuff like that. And, um, and there's maybe some cans of stuff as well. And then, yeah, some like protein bars, stuff like that, from what you can tell. All right. Good enough. Paranoia satisfied. She's going to go back to what she was doing. Cool. Uh, yeah, he brings the second crate in. And just so that I don't forget to mention it, he puts that one in the fridge because it's got like fresh meat and stuff in it. All right. Yeah. This could be a problem. I don't know that any of us cook. <laughs> That's a problem for later. <laughs> uh, hopefully some of it's just boil water. Add water. Yeah. Um and yeah. Do 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 <laughs> She programmed her kitchen to help nice. Um when when the door kind of opens and closes, you do hear some people working outside. And you're starting to think that everyone's been gone for a little bit. Not, not, maybe not too terribly long, uh, based on the fact that you're all supposed to be getting some rest anyway. So, you know, it's not urgent to come back and they're still working on the ship. But no one's really checked in for a little bit, a couple hours maybe by this point. Um, but yeah, you can go back to what you were doing if you'd like. I feel like she might try messaging the others. <laughs> just to see if that connects to the whatever comm system, personal comm system they'd worked up. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have the data sphere? Or I do. I have two dots in it, in fact. Cool. Uh, so what I will say is that if you go use the ship's comm like, system type thing, you'll notice that there is a like, little icon on the screen that is just Tegan's face. <laughs> I'm going to click it see what happens yeah. yeah uh that's basically tegan's data connection right there <laughs> and uh a little uh no she's got a lot of technology she's actually not too yeah. bad when it comes to tech yeah cool uh, i mean 
Most technocrats have at least a little bit. It's just maybe not your focus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to connect to Tegan. But before we get to that, we're going to find out what's happening with Tegan. <laughs> Yay! And off to you! <laughs> yep. So, Tegan, Heather, and Mateo are heading to this door. And... I believe Mateo was going to, like, open it, but he was waiting for you to, so I will let you take the lead on where you're going here, since you're looking for Nolan. I mean, I think we... We're just hoping that it doesn't open up to zombies. Yeah. We were just opening doors, trying to retrace our steps, and then we opened to zombies, and then just immediately was like, nope. Um, and I think we were real thinking, okay, think really, really hard about Nolan. Yeah. Yes. As we opened doors. Yeah. Yes. That is what you were thinking. So yeah, if neither of you two are specifically going to open the door, Mateo will just open it. Mateo gives zero fucks right now. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, Fair. Following very closely behind Mateo, though, so that he, he doesn't just get swept away by something. Yeah. 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 I'm not are sure you, if we you... insisted on holding hands or not. Oh, um, Tegan and Heather were handcuffed together. <laughs> right, that's what right. it Because I grabbed it from the sex dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then you were like, I can open these with matter if I need to. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming that the um, smooth club grooves are still playing. Yep. Oh, yeah. The smooth club grooves, grooves still playing. Cool. Just making sure. Yep. They will continue to play until we get to no one. Uh, <laughs> uh, no yeah, I guess fine. follow Mateo through the door. Uh, whoop. Tegan's like, damn, I wish I had some handcuffs from Mateo now. <laughs> <laughs> he will hold your hand if you, like, grab his hand. Like, he's not avoiding yeah. you two. He's just... Going through. A little... Yeah. Yeah. All right, yep. Hold on, we're not losing each other. <laughs> okay. And you head through the door. And... Nolan is not on the other side of this door, which... Knowing where Nolan is is probably a good idea, or a good thing, but you do see this white room that is just white and bright and completely devoid of anything, except for for a shape that seems to be bound and gagged and caged in the center of the room. Um, like, does it look like, like a person? Yeah. If you go a bit closer, like, I'm talking a couple steps, I'm not talking about going right up, but if you take a couple <laughs> steps closer, you realize why you weren't sure as you entered the room. Because the shape that's inside the cage is not staying in one form. It's shifting and changing almost constantly. It's kind of nauseating to even look at. She's, you think she's she, but female seems to be the form it takes the most. Whether it's a gorgeous woman or a, a mother looking at you with eyes that beg you to help her, or a small child still bound with chains and the bindings and the cage seem to shift with her hmm. keeping her constantly caged 
I think Heather's gonna start approach, like uh, try and approach, and uh, we'll tug Tegan uh, along. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tegan's also very intrigued, so okay. don't worry. Tegan's uh, <laughs> right up there with you. Um, just kind of like. Do I still have life sight up? I don't remember dropping it, but. Sure, you still have it. I don't remember. I don't I'll remember. let you have it. Sorry. Uh, cool. It's <laughs> fine. Can I, I, see I remember anything? Tegan's data thing because that was going to be mm -hmm. my excuse for uh, Robin not being able to make last game. But yeah. <laughs> but I don't remember anything else. So, yeah, you have it up. Okay. Cool. There is um. uh, no life signal coming from her. So that's weird. What? There is no no life scan like, like no life signal on i'm not seeing any indicators but it could be blocked by whatever is containing it hmm. um uh, uh hello can you hear me she looks directly at you but is gagged and can't make anything beyond. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, okay, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the record, this does not look like a like sex dungeon type. Yes, finding yes. and gagging. This is yes, this yes, is like no, a capture. No, no, I, I figured, <laughs> yep. figured that one. Figured sure. that. I, I just thought I'd be clear. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Could hmm. I'm wondering if Tegan could try and use um matter to and almost shoot like a a beam from her finger guns that will like stretch the fabric that the gag is and try and like because Tegan doesn't want to necessarily touch her right now, but so she's wondering if she shoots uh i'm actually trying to just change the the gag a little bit so it like will loose enough to fall so that she can talk yeah sure um you'd probably have to do some sort of like reprogramming of your arm to make it yeah. not lethal but you yeah. can do that cool yeah uh give me that uh we'll do an enlightenment roll first to make sure you can change it and then we'll do mm -hmm. like a firearms for cool. aiming <laughs> sounds great yeah. uh difficulty uh, of uh we'll say four okay five successes <laughs> yeah absolutely you can change your finger guns to do this you're like oh yeah no i just gotta I just gotta change yeah. some code there yep nope we're good yeah <laughs> yeah um give me a Dex and firearms, or energy weapons, if you have that instead. Uh, I have a, a specialty in cybernetic weaponry. Cool. You get to apply that. Yeah. And that's going to be a difficulty of, I'm going to say seven, because you're shooting through cage bars. OK. Oh, no. <laughs> One subtract, right? It's been a while. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. no! <laughs> I rolled three ones. I rolled a single ten. Uh, so I didn't botch. Uh, let you me re roll a ten. I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a nine. So two successes. <laughs> so I failed, but I didn't botch because I rolled okay. three ones and two successes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whoops. You <laughs> you you fire off your your finger guns and it hits the. Uh, the cage bar and just kind of <laughs> deflects off, but doesn't seem to affect the cage. Huh. Were you trying to open the cage? Mm, sure, let's go with that. Let's let's go with that. Didn't work though. Because I think the latch is over there. Oh, look who's smart and looking. 
not just jump into it's... shooting things. I mean, if you want to shoot things, go ahead. I'm just, I'm just trying to understand. All right, okay, open the latch then. I was gonna go around to try and find the latch. Yeah, uh, you can go over and find the latch. Is it locked like a padlock or anything? Yep. Okay, figure as much. She'll she'll reach out and do the thing where you like grab the padlock and like yank it just to see if it's fully actually secured. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Kelly just vibing in the corner there. Vibing, man. Like I'm good. Yeah. We're releasing some like terror on the ship. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not there. Um. Yet. <laughs> yeah, our private chat is just like, yeah, this is great, guys. Good job. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Heather, take um, two bashing damage, which you can try and soak with your stamina. If you'd like to, to roll that. Is it stamina roll? Yeah, yeah. Difficulty six, so. That is two successes. Cool. You take you take no damage, but it does shock you like it's a static shock. She'll shake her hand a little bit. Just kind of get the, the shock out. Yeah. Okay, so... Maybe we don't want to let it out. Well... It's all secured in there. Like, if we open the lock... It's still restrained. That's fair. I just want to take off the gag. Okay, I was aiming for the gag. I was trying to... I missed about it. I just wanted to get it to talk. I didn't... Because I don't want to, oh. you know, stick my hand in. But I was trying to shoot the... Yeah. Okay. Um. Can I... What happens? Uh, Heather's going to take one of these pebbles of Tass and is going to try and smack the lock with the, the prime imbued rock. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Let's try that. Amy and I shouldn't be left alone together <laughs> is the answer. Shouldn't be left alone and handcuffed together. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mateo, by the way, is standing by the door. Hasn't left, uh, which is probably a good thing, yeah. but is staring in like horror at what this thing is. <laughs> like, <laughs> ugh. Um, yeah, give me a dex and athletics to throw the rock. I mean, she was gonna just like, depending how big, how big is it, like a pebble, or like yeah, you have a variety of size, like variety of sizes of okay. of rock tasks. Because if there's any that were like kind of like like in like a funky like um like a wedge shape that you can kind of grab the edge of, she was literally just going to smack it, like grab it oh, the yeah, edge sure. and bash it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, then uh, you know what would be really helpful is if I had a character sheet up so I could remember what's on a character sheet. <laughs> I mean, maybe, right? Nah. There, there's standard rules, and then there's what Heather's trying. <laughs> Everything's I'm so sorry. Fine. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Come on, computer. What are you doing? All also, right. Kelly, these the dice that you got me recently were rolling really well, and then they rolled those three ones. You say that like it's my fault. Yeah, you bought these pink dice. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> treat them nice. I, this is their first time out of the cage. They maybe this is just the wrong character for them. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, Tegan's with the purple hair. If they're pink dice, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. I just. <laughs> well, they're they're close. Like they're. Okay, okay. They're, they're like really they're that cute. pink. So, yeah. yeah. They're not like hot pink. All right. So, Heather, you're just kind of aiming and smashing. Um, then let's just do a. Let's just have you roll strength to see if you can actually. <laughs> this is such a great roll for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's my difficulty? 
A six? A single success. Well done. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you managed to um, wedge the rock into the lock. And you can't pull it out. Hmm. But it's in there. Can you shoot this with your finger guns? Yeah. I can. Can you hit them with primal energy? No, I can't do that. But I could do it, shoot sucks. them with like electricity. Like, you know. That'd probably work. Yeah. All right, I will use forces too to shoot electricity. <laughs> you go reprogram your finger guns back to like pointing at the uh, specifically. She's um, Heather's pointing at the rock wedge into the lock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, give me that enlightenment <laughs> roll. Uh, difficulty of four. <laughs> okay, I rolled two tens though. That's nice. Uh, four successes. Nice. Yeah, you reprogram back to <laughs> to like lightning and yeah, and electricity and whatnot. Lightning, very very frightening me. Yes. Um, you're like, hmm, yes. Software upgrades are great. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And. Give me that Dex and Firearms. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh it's also only difficulty six because you're not shooting through bars. <laughs> Great. Okay, so that is... Uh, start with five and then re-roll two tens. It's another ten, six. Okay, seven successes <laughs> with that one. The dice have made up. I would like it to be known for the record that as she says, like, directs Heather to do it and reprogram, she's kind of, like, ducking, like, behind um, Anderson. Or, oh my god, I can't words. Um, Heather is ducking behind Tegan. There we go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so Tegan's, like, shooting, like, pew, pew, with one arm behind her back. Because um, you're like... Heather, you you notice as you duck behind Tegan that Mateo moves to be behind you guys at the back of the room. <laughs> it's just like this I don't I don't trust this. this <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, you fire off your finger guns and there's this the smell of ozone and the crackle of electricity as your finger guns discharge and hit the rock dead center and explode both the rock and the lock it was stuffed in. Whoa, baby. Yeah. There we go. Little pieces of shrapnel fly out, but they they don't come anywhere close to hitting you. They just they they kind of go all to every side and they're tiny because of how yeah. well you did. <laughs> wow. There we go. See? They just needed. They like they like to be back on the factory settings, you know. Makes sense to me. Um, and Heather's gonna reach over and uh, just yank the remains of the lock off. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you yank the remains of the lock off just fine. No sting. Okay. And grab the edge of the door, I guess, and the gate, or I guess the, the yeah. Cage. Cage door. And will, I guess, can, can she do it with her foot? Like, what type of, of cage is it? Is it, like, metal bars? Like, can she, like, hook it with a foot and, like, pull it open, kind of? Like, yep. kick? Yep, yeah, you can hook it with then. your foot. Cool. Uh, roll me stamina, difficulty six. Both of us? Um. Yeah, both of you. Yeah, because we're handcuffed together. Well, that's a yeah. fail. But not a botch. Oh, cool, cool. That's two successes for me. Cool. Um, Heather, you're going to take four bashing. Um, as 
a more intense static shock <laughs> works its way through you. Tegan, you're going to feel it hit your body and you take no damage. Dula. You would have taken two, but you rolled stamina, so. Ow. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. But uh, once once that goes through you, you've got the cage open, so. Oh, right. The form is still shifting between varying shapes. All human-like, but obviously with the shape shifting, it's a little off. All right. Who wants to go take the gag off the bound prisoner? Um, as as you say that, <laughs> as you say that, um, the form shifts, and where before it was, um, uh, it was positioned in such a way that it was staring at you through the bars as you walked into the room. It shifts, and now its head is on the other side, so it can look at you from where it is, and its head is on your side of the the cage now. So it's moved its body position but is still changed uh and mateo chimes in from the from the back are you sure this is a good idea no not even remotely but so far we've found zombies and the doors that go to other places and nothing makes sense so why not okay okay Okay. He moves back towards the door in case he needs to make him make an escape. <laughs> and yeah. There is a shifting creature. The gag I in think its mouth. It's a very positive sign that he's in expressing discomfort over our actions. As opposed to just completely flat, emotionless. I think this is a good good direction. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. You want to do it or do you want me to? You're the one that was talking about getting the gag off in the first place. I opened okay. the door. Fine. All right. All right. Tegan's going to go reach for the gag and pull it off. Cool. Yeah. Um... Just roll me straight decks um, with difficulty three. I just don't, just don't botch. <laughs> does hand eye apply? <laughs> yes, it does. Yay. Difficulty three. All right, that's two successes. Cool. Um, yeah, you managed to not touch the cage as you're reaching in. <laughs> yes. So you don't get additional shocks. Yep. This is like and, operation. Yeah. And you pull the gag down and um, it's it's tight so you kind of have to wiggle it a bit as, as you're, you're pulling on it. And your hand is between the gag and her face as she's shifting and you're like, that feels wrong um, <laughs> as as her skin kind of ripples and changes under under your hand as you're pulling on the gag but she helps kind of spit it out <clears throat> thank you please yeah, can you help me oh. what are you and why are you all tied up Mariana captured me and and is using my powers to my abilities somehow fuel this place. Ah, mm. the, the 
the, the shifting hallways. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. get. And That's... the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, sorry to be rude by saying this, but what? What? What are you? You? You're not. You're not from Earth, obviously. Um, did she find you out here on like wherever? Do you know where we are? When we are? You're in the deep umbra. She found me here. We. I was from Earth once, but a long time ago and have very little memory of the place. Mariana and I were lovers until she turned on me and trapped me here. That's not fair. That's kind of a dick move. Yes. Well. Um, Heather. Because several games ago now, yeah. you you knew this small fact. I'm going to just give this to you. <laughs> okay. Um, if she was from Earth once a long time ago, chances are she was human, and then essentially um disc discorporated sort of type of yeah yeah mm -hmm. so she cool. is now a, like an umbral entity Which spirit would explain for why the mages i'm not getting a life pattern uh, yeah gonna tweak a couple things um i think because she's got her goggles and everything yep and we'll like switch something out and is going to um, switch over to dimensional science and see if we can get a different reading. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, give me that enlightenment roll, please, and hey. thank you. Uh, difficulty of three for this one. Can you remind me what the dimensional... Is that spirit? Is that yeah. That's the technocracy yeah. spirit? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's the technocracy version of spirit. Nice. Yeah, I was too... Cool. Um, yeah, so as you're doing that, Tegan and this creature, woman, spirit are talking. And, and she says, My name was once Empress Iliara. Iliar but, um, It's uh, so go by that name, but it doesn't mean as much as it once did. Um, and as she says that, uh, Heather, you configure your goggles and you turn, turn and look at her through them again. And definitely, definitely this is a spirit. Well, dimensional entity, extra dimensional entity. Um, and you kind of see what what you might describe as like an aura around her this pulsing black aura that is extending beyond the cage and up into the main part of the room that seems to move and throb and pulse along with her shape changes. Right. What's that? Heather's straight up just pointing at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what's what? That, that connection. Is that what's connecting you to the building? Or the dome? Do you not see it? No, what are you talking about? So weird black aura heathering you to this place? No, I'm not talking about what you're saying. 
Yeah, but you're not an a, you're not a dimensional extra dimensional entity. Well, okay. Um, both of you <laughs> can either roll me like a perception and empathy or a manipulation and subterfuge type oh, role. Boy. <laughs> Something like that. I have like no that. subterfuge. I have no empathy. Cool, uh, I have cool. no empathy. Uh, <laughs> so I guess we'll do manipulation and subterfuge. I, I do remember the, the lack of empathy twins, yes. <laughs> yep. That's I can awesome. do flat manipulation. What was the other one? It was... Uh, uh, perception. I can also That's do just flat nice. perception. Cool. Um, I'll also let you add... Uh, what else would it be here? Enigmas, if you have that. Nope. nope. I have okay. cosmology. <laughs> Uh, cosmology. You can you can add cosmology. Okay, cool. Cosmology yeah. and I guess perception is what I'm gonna do. Perception over. would be better with that one, yes. Yes. Um, and what is my difficulty? Your difficulty yeah. for that will be eight. Okay. But the difficulty for a subterfuge roll will be six. Okay. Cool. I got three successes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love that laugh. <laughs> well, um, three tens. Holy shit, Amy! I don't there have any, any specializations to re-roll, um, but it That's is sad, three tens, yes. and then no one. Five, Amy. <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> um, so you both realize something at the same time. Tegan, you are suddenly struck with the absolute certainty that this thing is lying to you. Mm. Whatever, whatever Heather is seeing and whatever, um, like asking what it is and, and the responses that are coming, all lies. 100% okay. lies. Um, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, paradigms. Thanks. Yeah. Good, good. Um, I'll figure that out in a second. Heather, you don't know that she's lying. But what you do know is that as you're asking these questions, you kind of focus your goggles a bit more. And you know for certain that this aura is her. It's her presence and while you're not you're not 100 sure whether this means she's escaping or not but it's definitely a part of her and means she's bigger and badder than she looks this is a very very powerful malevolent extra-dimensional entity what do I know about making deals with extra-dimensional entities to keep them from hurting us? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh boy. Woohoo. The gang deals um, makes a deal with the devil. Even just like a theoretical. Um, you know that if you make a deal, it's about a 50-50 shot if you don't know what this what this extra dimensional entity really is it's about a 50 50 shot whether it will just lie to you to get what it wants and not honor a deal um or that you'd actually be able to deal with it well um 50 50 shot when it also looks like it's quite malevolent and will probably try and kill us anyway is kind of the 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 logic here mm -hmm. um Heather, of course, has not said this out loud because no, uh, yeah, why would no. you say that? No, why would you say <laughs> I'm that? I'm so sorry. Uh, Heather's just like looking at it like, okay. Can we make a deal? What? He Hold on. I need to just speak with, with Heather for a second. Why? <laughs> Turn <laughs> her head. Like, yeah, the lies just been straight lying to us. 
Yes, I'm saying this in stage whisper, but Tegan's trying to whisper is quiet. I'm sure the bean can hear us anyway, but you know, Tegan's at least trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's clearly a malevolent extra dimensional entity. So yeah, why are we deal? gonna make why we can't make a deal with it? Because it's malevolent and will probably try and kill us anyway without a deal. We can just leave. Can we? We can try, and then when we can't, then we can make the deal. All right, let's try it your way. Okay. <sighs> I'm just gonna go try and find. We're missing a few people from our group. Miss Empress. But don't appreciate being lied to right off the bat. Doesn't quite bring a good system of trust. I'm sorry you feel that way. Heather, you see the the aura kind of growing darker and and blacker. But you aren't attacked. you offended it okay let's go okay. uh tegan uh, there's a ringing sound in your head as though you're oh, getting a phone call holy. oh okay <laughs> um tegan speaking hello sophia's on the other end <laughs> yep it's been hours what are you guys doing Oh, you know, um, just having the time of our lives, fig ships, zombies, dimensional science entity beings. I'm handcuffed to Heather right now, and I don't know where Nolan is. Um, and Mateo has no soul. So, you know, that's a thing. Um, how are you? How's the ship? Are you high? No, I really wish I was. Do you need backup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe start with that then. Well, you know, I was gonna see how you were doing. How's your day? You know, just dealing with the the being. How did you get out of training without being able to report? I figured you called me. You didn't quite report. You, this was like a phone call. You were ringing in my head. I clicked a button on the screen to try and get a hold of you guys because oh. you hadn't checked in in three hours. That works. Great. Uh, yeah, no, situation not wonderful. Requesting backup. All right. So um, all guns or like, where are you? I don't know. We've been trying to go through doors that lead to other places. This place is shit shape shifting around us. It is like a maze to get out here. So I don't know how you're gonna find us or something. If you can try and scan us to figure out where the fuck we are in this ship, that would be uh, cool. roughly where did you go when you left the ship? We went in the bay up some stairs into this main lobby and then it was just like doorways after doorways and you keep going but then you uh, go back through the same door and it's Eden? not the same yes Eden, who are you talking to so sophia in your head yeah i'm connected to the ship and yeah there's a little like a little cheapy version of me on the ship so you know if someone wanted to call me apparently it works so that's good yeah, you're having this conversation with, and Heather's just like slightly pointing at the entity in the cage. Yeah, we're gonna try and leave this room now. But yeah, um, wherever we're docked to the ship, we're several doors in there, and the doors lead different places. So, so all um, right. I'm gonna try and maybe use this link to get a sense of where you are temporally and spatially. Yeah, that would be great. 
I think I can uh, force it. Yeah, I could also try to try and help. Hmm? Might be able to trace this linkage. Well, that's like I also have a specialty in co co-location for for data for data four, so definitely I think Tegan would I think would she's like gonna try and, and take one of the ship's handheld end. type computers or whatnot, and see if she can like pull this link to it and leave. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, you've got this link. Can you follow it to get out? I mean, I can get out. I just don't want to leave without- You drag Heather with you? Yeah, yeah but there's so Nolan is somewhere in the ship, but I don't want to leave Nolan. This is Unless... true, but then we could always get out and come back in together. Instead of me trying to find all of you. That's true, actually. That's smart. Um, I'm gonna try and beam us. So, okay. uh... I'll retreat to the doorway. Yeah, and that she's sounds gonna great. put action to words and move out of the way. Tegan's gonna try and reach for Mateo and uh, grab onto Heather and try and beam us back to the ship. Okay. Yes, Heather. <laughs> while you're while you're having that short conversation, um, I'm hoping there's enough time for Heather to turn to the entity, um, and. Because she's operating under the logic of malevolent doesn't mean inherently evil. Uh, it might just be malevolent because it's been and full of spite because it's been trapped for so long and we don't know what this is targeting. And is going to say, we'd like to leave and leave you to do whatever it is. Could you return our friend Nolan and let us and help us leave? Or 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 at least spit like basically spit Nolan out at the port of our ship or into our ship in exchange for something or what would you like in exchange because if, you, if, if you'd like in exchange for us to just leave you alone to do what you want then that's cool that like that's fine you can do that is the general gist of it except imagine it with like no expression <laughs> yeah because you have <laughs> you have church's wisdom right yeah 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 no emotion yay mm -hmm. uh If you free me and leave me to deal with Mariana, I can, I can find your friend. Can you return our friend? Yes. Uh, give me a, that, like, cosmology roll um i'm gonna lower your difficulty because you're actively looking at the aura <laughs> cosmology and perception again yes uh difficulty six okay so tegan's just having this conversation while you're having the conversation with the entity and tegan's like giving you a side eye <laughs> that's three successes cool um You're pretty sure that if this, basically, you can't tell whether it's lying, but it's not being fully honest with you. It It's Aura kind of shivers a little in anticipation and you think she might just be giving you the answers you want. Hmm. Whether so or not I know she can actually about do it. binding anything, these sort of packs into place. Uh, I mean, you might have some knowledge of it, but I don't know if you have the ability to do it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, what happens if I throw a task rock to it to feed it? At some point, you're gonna get just feel that he can grab onto you and cast. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, let's take this point at a time. Uh, yeah. Talking to Sophia, grab Heather, grab Mateo, bamf out of there. Mm 
that's your plan, right? Yep. And as she's doing that, you're going to try and toss a uh, you're gonna throw rock. a toss to this thing to see if that'll help it free itself. Cool, cool, cool. So, <laughs> um, let's get Tegan to roll enlightenment. Um, yep. This is gonna be. You're basically doing beam me up, Scotty. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we are going to call that a difficulty of plus actually you're basically opening a gate. I'm trying to do this in like, like thinking correspondence magic, because that's what I'm familiar with, but you're doing it in the technocratic fashion. So it's basically correspondence for where you're just opening a gate um, rather than having to add difficulty for additional people. So we're going to call that a difficulty seven including my minus three to bamf back uh no so difficulty four because you have your minus three uh so does this count as co-location i think co-location is two places at once Mm, okay yeah so i would say no okay that's fine Oh, I'm so glad I that that minus that mm-hmm. minus three three to bring it down to four. I rolled two fours, so three successes. Oh, nice. There. Yeah. Um, you do the beam me up, Scotty, and you take all three of you back to the ship. Um, as you do, let's get Heather to make that. Dex and athletics, chuck a rock. <laughs> and what was my difficulty? Um, or would you like me to just tell you what I rolled? Just tell me what you rolled <laughs> a 10, a 9, a 6, and a 3. Nice, actually. Yeah, um, yeah, you. Chuck the task rock. <laughs> and the last thing you see before the ship or before this room dematerializes in front of your eyes and then your ship rematerializes um, is you see the, the rock hit the ground, bounce, bounce off one of the cage bars to land directly in front of Eliara. And then the room explodes in bright light and you're on the ship. And uh, uh, as you go, um, you feel a bit of like inquisitive pressure in your in your mind i don't know if you have a mind shield or if you have mind at all i can't remember no cool. heather does not heather has no mind cool um so you you feel a presence and then you hear her voice and she just says I'm sorry, but your friend is no longer in my presence. And then you appear on the ship in front of Sophia. And we're going to move to Nolan now (laughs) to find out where Nolan is. Um, uh, Yeah. Uh, Christine, if you need to step away, you can, because we're going to have Nolan for a bit. (laughs) You were falling. You jumped from the window and you fell. And then you had what you probably would describe as an out-of-body experience of some sort where maybe a hallucination on the verge of death or something like that. Um, 
Mariana was there and someone else and and then you remember that Michaela had been there too at one point and then you felt this epiphany as something opened in your mind and you realized that you are too hard on yourself a lot of the time. And with that epiphany, you were falling again and you landed on something soft and squishy. Okay. And that voice in your head telling you that he's with you, brother. All right. Wait. Squishy. You look around and there's the first thing you notice is a smell and it's that sickly sweet smell of rot of death that seems to come from everywhere this is It's dark, and it's hard to see. But eventually your vision adjusts. And a ways in front of you, not in a, I'm going to say, not in a uh, distance that is inherently threatening to you, but a little bit of, of, of a ways in front of you, is this large opening. The walls of it, you guess, are fleshy and pulsing. And you just feel like you're going to throw up from looking at it. Hello? There's no answer from the space around you. But you do feel a slight warmth inside you from from your experience. Just that reassurance that you are not alone here. All right. Um Okay. There's a place ahead of me. There's up? Is there an up? There is an up. If you focus on it enough, there's darkness, but then you can see past that extends up as if there was a building you had just jumped out of. So you can see the building. You're still connected to the Pleasure Dome somehow. I'm going to pull out my flashlight. I do have a pocket flashlight. You do, yeah. You turn on the flashlight and it flickers on. Ah, glorious light. All right, good, 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 good. The light is weak as it extends from you, but 
and it doesn't show you much in the shadow, but it is, it's on. So there's only uh, te technically two ways out of here. One is back, falling back up the way I came from, and the other is going ahead. So there's there's going ahead. There's figuring out a way back up, and there's going into the darkness that you don't know if it what is there. Right. Um, well, the only thing, one thing I can do, really, and that's, uh, um, all right, let's do a vibe check. Vibe check. Uh, vibe I'm check. going, I'm going to use, uh, detect resonance. This is a bad thing. I know this. <laughs> Nolan doesn't know this, but uh -huh. I'm going to roll detect <laughs> resonance to look for the worst resonance and then go the other way. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Yep. That is two successes. Okay. Unless the difficulty is much higher, in which case it is probably less successes. No, no, we'll, we'll give you the two successes. Um, you get the resonances Consuming. Good. Um. Oh, what's another good word? So entropic consuming. Uh, entropic. Inverting? Catastrophic. Okay. Hmm. Inverting. What was that? <laughs> An entropic inverting. Yep. Catastrophic. Oh boy. Yep. All coming from in front of you. What about... Is that the darkness or is that the... the, the That's the opening. The fleshy opening that looks like... Never go to yeah. the sphincter. Okay. Um, okay. Looking into the darkness. Cool. In the darkness, um, you get kind of... Dynamic malevolence. Hmm. And that's about it. <laughs> cool. That's great. That's what Mariana was broadcasting. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm. All right. Well, first of all, I'm going to reach into my pocket. Time to get serious. Okay. I gotta get back to this ship. Okay. 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 All right. A little mind shield goes a long way. A little mind shield goes a long way. I'm gonna spend a willpower and get a mind shield going. Cool. Uh, I would like to point out for our viewers that uh, due to your seeking, you did gain all of your willpower back. This is true. Yeah. So you're not <laughs> you're not running on empty right now. <laughs> oh God! Thank thank you so much. That is very mm -hmm. helpful. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and toss on a mind shield. I'm gonna be shooting for uh, for scene and for two successes three successes, then I can roll twice. Cool. Does this fall under my specialty in mind? What's your specialty in mind again? Social conditioning. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, if I have a, a specialty focus, uh, breathing meditation, that is... That's six successes on one roll. Nice. Yeah, you throw up that that shield and 
you didn't realize it while you were there, but the pressure that you had been feeling coming off of everything around you, the darkness, that opening in front of you that you are very sure you don't want to go into. And just everything. It comes off of you in waves. It your shoulders relax a little as you feel a little bit more in control. Alright, well I'm not going into the flesh, Ma. Uh not without consent. Nobody's here, so I'm going into the darkness. Glad I brought extra shoes on the ship. You head into... You take steps into the darkness. And... Your flashlight lights the way a little bit. <laughs> Just enough where you can see where you're you're putting your foot next. <laughs> you are my best friend, buddy. And... Hmm. I'm just trying to think of how this yeah you take those steps you squelch through some sort of fleshy icker ickiness you're not really sure what to call it Mm -hmm. but it feels wrong you know that much and you feel a bit of an inquisitive presence float over your shield and does not penetrate And give me a perception and awareness check. Oh boy, will I ever. Uh, awareness? Yeah, let's do that. Does being astute help? Yes, it does. Wolf. <laughs> Dif- <laughs> difficulty, <laughs> difficulty four? Uh, <laughs> that uh, is... What'd no. you roll? I rolled zero successes thanks to a one. Okay, okay. It's too dark. I can't see. I, I, I'm i just... It, it, there's too much squelching. I can't concentrate. Yep, fair enough. Um, I am going to let you re-roll that. I am not going to argue with you. Mm-hmm. What's my difficulty? <laughs> difficulty of five. Okay, yeah, okay, that's great. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Then that's a three, Kelly. Learn your math. Uh, that's three successes then. Cool, cool. Um, you feel this burst of energy and warmth from within you as you shift your body in such a way that the clawed arm coming out of the darkness doesn't hit you. Oh, hi. How's it going? Good to meet you. Um, I think that we got off on the wrong foot here. I'm not supposed (laughs) to be here. I'm just looking for the exit. Roll me initiative. Uh, six plus uh, it's Dex in a way it's actually so 12 nice yeah 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 um, Yeah, you get to go first so I'm gonna raise my flashlight to get a look at this thing cool um, da, 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 da. you raise your flashlight and 
as the light moves up this thing's body, you kind of wish it hadn't. Because it is the most grotesque visual anything you have ever seen. To the point where your mind may not be able to fully comprehend what you're looking at. And the light flickers and dies. Oh, balls. Oh, son of a... You know, they say that in therapy, when you lash out at other people, you're really angry with yourself. So I want you to look inside of yourself and, and, uh... Oh, screw it. Look inside of yourself. And uh, I'm going to uh, to do a fast cast, Jen. I'm going to use um, Mind Force Spirit 1 uh, Entropy 3 to make him target himself instead. <laughs> he can look inside of himself. Okay. I'm going to spend a willpower on this. Yep. Um, um, don't don't spend that, that willpower. You're spending a temporary... Oh, you're right. I had temp still. Have. Well, oh, no, you, I am gifting you a temporary willpower because of that merit you have. Oh, yes. I will call on that merit sometime soon. Uh, it, so it's that, calling on itself for you. Yay! I love it when merits do, turn do, themselves do, do on. Due to your seeking. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be... Uh, difficulty... Oh, is it vulgar? Inside oh, of here? Oh, yeah. Inside okay, of here. So, does this thing count as a witness? No. Yay! Uh, oh God, this is only difficulty of seven, nine. Do I have any quintessence? Let's find out. Uh, I have three points of quintessence. No, I don't. Yay. Not anymore. I just, yay! Now we're at difficulty six. Yay! Uh, crap. Um. Yeah. Well, it's two successes at least. Three successes with the willpower. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um, now's that time when, as a storyteller, I get to figure out what this thing's dice pool is. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, as you kind of yell at it <laughs> and you see it you're, you're yes it's darkness in darkness and your flashlight is gone but mm. your eyes focus on it um, just just it without seeing the detail that you were previously <laughs> but you see the shape That's proper. and you see its arm reach back and then it just kind of freezes and you can't really tell what happens but it seems like the shadow folds in on itself somehow oh good it's, it's not it's not attacking you great Great, you you work on yourself, and uh, I'm gonna get some cardio, and I'm gonna run. Cool, you run, and I think that's a great time to take a break. <laughs> I think that's a great time to take a break too, because I want to pee myself. Uh, let's do it. Let's not pee myself. Let's take a break. Uh, <laughs> Back in a few. Welcome back. How's everyone doing? I'm Are having good? Moments, so I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> a little worried for Nolan. Everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> Just a little worried. Yeah, it's a good time. Um, for reference, the name of the lipstick color I'm wearing is Carnivorous. <laughs> 
great. It's fine. I'm sure um, that's not re relevant to anything that's going on. Oh no, I, I think we might be in danger. <laughs> we need another oh, one. No. <laughs> um, Bring out the so... clones. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Nolan, I, uh, due to your seeking, I preemptively accessed your inner night merit. So you do have those five temporary, now four temporary points of willpower. Um, but you can use the other things as well. That, if you, that does if mean you... I have willpower 13, by the way, when that, yep. when that goes off. Yep. I thought you might need it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so did your inner knight <laughs> oh Paul Narif <laughs> uh, man yeah um, Gabriel Gabriel's his name good old Gabe yep yeah he decided that he was tired of not being obvious to you <laughs> so he was just like hmm I'm gonna show you you can actually do shit hey look nice. you're good at stuff now right but yeah 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 uh, for those who are unaware the inner nightmare basically uh, grants you special gifts when it seems like all hope has been lost including some temporary willpower and some abilities of, of accessing. Uh, I was desperately stuff. trying to look up like what the other things were. I'm yeah. Like, what else does it give me? Cause they've changed you it can... every edition. Oh yeah. Uh, it's access traits. You don't possess as per the background dream at a rating of five, um, but without entering a trance. So you can just access shit for the next, for, for this scene. <laughs> Um, and you can perhaps recall things from a previous life that the character could not possibly have known, like a language or an escape route in a place he's never visited or a person he's never met before, you know? Yup. So yeah, feel free to just ask for stuff and chances are you'll get something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. How's, how's everybody how's, doing? Uh, yeah, how's everybody? How are you doing, Jen? You excited to torture us? Yes. I've been looking forward to this. I mean, I I joked, well, I, I said, it wasn't a joke. I said right before game that I had figured out the last bit of plot immediately before our call. And that is true. But this general, the general everything of this episode i've been building up for like three episodes so it's it's good to finally get to this point it's good this is a good it's going to be a good like mid mid arc break mid season break yeah absolutely yep. we're only gonna be gone That's a little while, I guess yeah yep yep um uh, but yeah, and uh, yes, to the players in our private chat, you have guessed correctly where Nolan is. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty obvious if you know the, um, uh, let's say, attributes of an Ephandic call. What? No, I'm just in Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia is also fleshy and smells like death. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. Well, this will just confirm things for Sophia that the traditions are nephondic and <laughs> it, their disorder leads to even worse chaos and harm. And while not all of the technocracy might be as up and up as she would like, the traditions just all fall this way. <laughs> I love that logic. Right. It's super good. It's super good. <laughs> I mean, it's just oh. confirming what she's already thought, right? 
yeah, everything she's absolutely. been taught, everything she's been shown. And now one of the first instances of having to rely on a tradition. Mm-hmm. And they're evil. <laughs> evil and deceptive. Yes, they are. Ah. Well, how about that that music I made Kelly put on though? I found that today good. too. Yeah. It's it's uh tense. It's tense music. <laughs> it's very tense. Or whore. The guy does the worst puns in his names for things. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the uh, it's not cheating. It's technically out of brilliance. Yeah, that that's right. <laughs> but okay, I'm going to pour myself a drink, and then I think it's time to get back into this and see what's about to happen. <laughs> Hopefully nothing. Hopefully it's just you know, and then we got on the boat, the ship, whatever. There's a bunch of geese overhead. I'm just going to adjust my windows real quick. So, let's get back into it. And we're going to continue with Nolan as he runs through the darkness, feeling his feet squelch on the ground with every step. Just got to get out of here. Just keep running. Just keep running. Pretty much. Uh, Give me a... uh, like a stamina plus roll. athletics sure yeah oh I actually bought athletics <laughs> yay <laughs> holy crap yeah. oh that I got one I got 110 so Nolan is Nolan's doing his cardio this yeah. is just this is yep. me at the gym by the way just like I've got points of athletics but I can't do cardio <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, it's you're starting to breathe fairly heavily through your mouth, which has cut off the scent that is following you. But now you're tasting it, and that's worse. Why? Why? You do remember this sort of smell, though, because it is the smell of death and and rotting and you've been to some scenes that just aren't pleasant to be around but this is still worse than those I don't like this at all Mm. all right we're good you hear coming out of the darkness not close to you but you don't know where it's coming from. You can hear Mariana's voice calling. Nolan! Nolan, I just want to talk. Nolan, are you sure you don't want to join me? You can be so much better than you are now. We can do so much together. I'm married, lady. But I want to do more with you. You can do Plenty on your own. God, I shouldn't be yelling now. She knows where I am. Ah, God damn it. This was her plan all along. It's like that serial killer joke with the song. Uh, okay. Um, um. She gets quiet, but you can feel that kind of inquisitive feeling over your shield again. You're pretty sure it's her. But you're also pretty sure she hasn't broken through, so. Balls. Um. Okay. I need a distraction.
Um. She's probably hitting me by by mind magic or something. So. Let's talk about it. I'm over here. And um, he is going to use his wedding ring as a mind focus because it has a deep psychological attachment to create a psychological imprint, basically an illusory copy of himself and huck it as far into the frickin' call as he can and take off running. Okay, cool. Let's because do it's the, it. It's the only thing on him that has that much resonance. Yep. Spending a willpower. I have no more Quint. It was a better idea than that, guys. It really was. Um, <laughs> damn. Uh, that's gonna... So he's gonna charge up for a minute. How many successes yep. do I need? Because I've got two. Um... I think you need, depending on how long you want it to last for. So if you want it to last want, for like. I want it to last for a scene at least, but I want it to be like basically to a, to a, like a mind scan. Yeah. And to like direct interactions. Like yeah. basically I want to program an NPC using yeah. a mental yeah, yeah. illusion. Cool. Um, so I think you need more than double what you rolled, but I will let you spend one of your inner night willpower to mm -hmm. roll, to continue your roll, to hang on to it. Boy, I'm going to do that. Yes, I am. Is this social conditioning? No, this is illusions. Uh -uh. Yeah, this is illusions. Okay, so does that inner night, so does that inner night one count toward my willpower expenditure? No. Okay, so that's going to be three more successes then. Cool, yeah. Uh, that will give you enough to make it seem like it's you for a scene. Okay. If you if you want to, yeah, I was going to say, if you want to put a little bit more power into it, you can, but it's, it's ah, good sure. enough. No, I'm going to put a little more into it if I can. Cool. Oh no, I got greedy. <laughs> <laughs> that's Oops. just a that's just a fail. Okay. But it's okay. two. So, yeah. I saw two ones, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah. Turning so into a JoJo you, character. Oh no. You push it a little bit farther, and you can feel it starting to fray and break at the edges. So you just let it go. And it's attached to the ring, and it's good enough. <laughs> All right. And yeah, you chuck it. Yeah, and then I run like hell. Excellent. Um, give me a perception and alertness, but you uh, perception and either alertness or awareness. You can do like a mind scan if you're wanting to do that. I would like to do a mind scan. Okay. Do that and then still give me the roll, but we'll give Why you Why are a... you betraying me? <laughs> well, to be fair, my difficulty on mind scan would be like difficulty of four. Oh, yeah. So it'd be two four. successes. Okay. Yeah. You can throw up a do, a... do a mind scan. You're just like... As you run, you try and steady your breathing and are just like, can I hear minds <laughs> can i he hear anything i can i can hear the sound of electricity let's yeah okay perception and awareness let's go and we're gonna say that's a difficulty of three because of the mind scan oh damn uh then that's uh all successes that's seven successes cool yeah um you run you you run and 
you felt that kind of inquisitive presence leave after had been like looking at you for a moment you say let's talk and you toss your ring and you can feel that presence heading towards where you threw the ring and as you run you hear just on the edge of your awareness and you're not even sure if it's thoughts or if she actually says it out loud but you hear the words the eaters of soul the eater of souls demands a sacrifice and will be freed from malpheus and you run uh This sucks. This sucks. I don't like this at all. This sucks. God, why does it suck so much? A light Mm -hmm. appears in front of you. Oh, this sucks less. And it's you think it's like a lantern kind of showing showing you a way out maybe or something or leading you deeper in you're not really sure but you know Mariana's not in that direction (laughs) whatever happens you are running away from Mariana (laughs) okay 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 light light's good Light's great. I'm going toward the light. I don't like thinking it like that. Uh Uh-huh, yep. You go toward the light. And perhaps not soon enough, the light begins to surround you rather than just be in front of you. And as you blink your eyes to clear your vision you're not dead from what you can tell oh good not so that, that's a plus and you're in a white room oh. an empty white room how white Entirely white. Man, is it always white? And I'm going to move back to the others as they appear on the ship in front of Sophia and <laughs> beam me up. Whew. That works. Ha. Huh. Love it when it does that. It didn't get stuck in the machine like I did last time. You're joking, right? This is a this is a No, you remember that am I Mark Mark fight? A little late to the party? Yeah, I got stuck in the computer trying to transport. There was a risk, uh, for sure. But I made it. Um we noted. Not going that way, alright. Fine. Um Alright, so no one. one. Yeah, Tegan's gonna try and hook up to the ship and try and use data lovely uh, <laughs> uh, to to talk to try and like get Nolan's signature well the entity seemed to think didn't seem to know where Nolan was I mean the entity doesn't know Nolan well, maybe I can try and find anomalies him in its- domain well where where would Nolan be I don't know possibly somewhere that the entity couldn't access on the 
Pleasure Dome. Huh. Or dead. Hmm. Preferably not that one. Yeah. Unless being alive somewhere else is significantly worse. Question. With life three and data two, if I had some biological material of Nolan, could I figure out where he is? Yep. Alright. Pretty sure I've got his coffee cup somewhere. Yep. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna go find that. I'm just not gonna say anything to anybody. I'm gonna turn around and leave and go get that and come back. Yep. Yeah. yeah, oh, um, and Let's Sophia, you would you would have noticed that, that Tegan and he Heather are handcuffed together. Um, I, I'm sure you weren't co you weren't going to comment on it but you do notice that <laughs> just kind of look at it look at them raise one eyebrow leave <laughs> for the past well Heather's going to pull out her tablet and is going to try and message Kibo who she last spoke to right before they ran off to go investigate and snoop in the pleasure do dome Yep. Um, yeah, you get no response from the message from Kibo. That's concerning. So, are we gonna get uncuffed now? Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Tegan will, uh, I guess use, uh, or finger gun, uh, matter, and try and z zort us apart. Please zort either your cuff or the chain. I'm going for them. the chain in the middle. Good. No. No. N no, Kelly. Bad. But that's that's no. That's no what one. finger banging is. Bang. <laughs> no. <laughs> terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um, so, <laughs> give me that, Switch that over. Uh, enlightenment roll. What's my difficulty? Uh, four. Okay, two successes. Cool. You reprogram your finger guns again. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. This is... Yeah, I'm getting the hang of this. Yep. Uh, then what's my difficulty for? If you put, if you put your hands on like a table and lay the chain flat and tight between them, yeah, your difficulty is three. If you're trying to just do it while you're standing there, no. your difficulty is higher. <laughs> no, Tika's gonna go to the table, put them both arms on, and just like, pew. Then your difficulty is three. Okay. Cool. Uh. That one out there. Five successes. <laughs> Excellent. You zap the chain apart. Zort. Zort, zort. Mm -hmm. And you are free of each other. <laughs> Mateo has kind of sat down in the hallway just like just doesn't seem to know what to do with himself. <sighs> okay. I think Sophia probably comes back with a coffee, a used coffee cup in her hand. Yep. Easily found, easily grabbed. I was going to sit there with a scanner and probably a laptop of some sort, tablet, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. make the connections between enter life data. Yep. Track. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. It's going to take you a little bit, but uh, just because you got to enter that data. Mm -hmm. Um have to enter but, like the whole DNA sequence or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. 
uh, or at the very least be like, okay, and now I have to take this part of the data and, 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 and yeah. Um, like a couple of rounds is what I'm talking about, but mm -hmm. just to actually do the actions and roll me that enlightenment. Right. Uh, difficulty. What was my difficulty? Uh, five. Yes. Three successes, just. <laughs> Two fives Excellent. and a six. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, there is... Um, so as you do that, the on on like the tablet comes up a map of the pleasure dome and nothing seems to be like shifting on it or anything um you're not sure if that's because that has stopped or because it just isn't showing on the map but you get a map or potentially it was just mental stuff going on or something. It was confusing right. them mentally so that it seemed like everything was changing on them, but it wasn't actually. They were just standing still in a room. Exactly. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Point is, the map isn't shifting. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no. It says no signal. No signal. No signal. And then suddenly, as if out of nowhere, just a red dot pops up on the screen. Outside of like the actual map, probably, right? <laughs> Uh, no, it pops up on the map. Interesting. Far into it or nearer to us? Um, kind of look at the map for a second and you're like, okay, here are the hangar doors. Uh, probably, no, like, kind of close to you guys, yeah. Okay. Not, not super far into everything. Like, it looks like it goes from the hangar doors into, like, this lobby area, which you remember having seen. And then um, it branches off into a bunch of different directions, and it's one of the closer branches. All right, she's gonna, <clears throat> sorry, turn the tablet to the others and go, um, so I think that's where Nolan is. At least that's where his biological data is. His body containing DNA. Okay. There. Okay. Whether or not it is dying, I cannot tell you. Okay. Though, I mean, technically, that would be take quite a bit of refinement because everybody's technically dying. We're just doing it very, very slowly. Um. Yeah. Well, if you can help me pin for that, I can try and beam him up here. Well, here's the data. Perfect. Uh, then, yeah, I guess I will try and lock on. So I, I think for the most part, it should connect just fine. Because, I mean, tech technocratic agents are generally trained to med their mm -hmm. magic. It's much easier yeah. for you guys to to work on the same Fine. things. It's it's not like Evelyn and Josephine trying to learn spirit magic and do <laughs> similar spirit magic. It's, it's here's science. data. It's alchemy. It's science. It's <laughs> yeah. Right? And then this is this is it's science. Yeah, it's science. It's data. It's I can work with this. <laughs> right? We all essentially and since have you the both same have, yeah. focus. Since you both have the, the spheres. Um it's basically giving you giving Tegan a uh, stronger sympathetic connection is what the mages would call it, but you know, <laughs> giving yeah. a data link that I used to, I hmm. hooked it up via something else, but it's still data. Yeah, and it means she doesn't have to necessarily use life <laughs> because she has yeah. the connection already. <laughs> I used a different connection mm -hmm. to find him, but the yeah. data is the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely uh, attempt to do that. So, cool. give me that enlightenment roll. Perfect. I'm a spend a willpower. Cool. Do so. Because I don't want to bomb. 
Uh, yeah, co-location is two to one, so this doesn't apply. All right, what's my difficulty? Uh, seven. Unless you want to spend Quint. <laughs> I do not have any of that. Cool. It's like it's yeah. a limited resource or something. Yeah, it's like it's a <laughs> limited resource or something. Uh, that would be three successes with the willpower. Nice. Okay. Um, cool, 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 cool. I'm just going to roll some things. I hope your soul comes with you, Nolan, wherever you are. Your body's back, gonna be back with us, hopefully. But hopefully your soul comes, too. So, just, just pay no attention to, um, how many dice I'm rolling. Because it's just, it's just it's a lot to wrap my hands around. Concern. <clears throat> what? Exalted big dice pools. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. So, Tegan, you, um... Actually, well, we'll come back to that. Uh, you lock on to Nolan, and um, Nolan, as you kind of end up in this white room, you're there for a moment, and then you feel this weird tug on your body. Um, oh. Well, that's weird. And in a moment, you're going to show up on the ship. But before that happens, uh, Heather, you get a notification email or message private message okay yeah i'll click that tap it yeah it's it's kibo um and he goes uh he is using a uh, fully leet speak but i'm not going to oh, lordy okay <laughs> i'm not gonna spell that out so you just have to imagine it yeah uh Found some treasures. Also found not friends. <laughs> um, back soon. Um, I will send an emoji of a thumbs up and then say, um, okay, uh, we're le like leaving soon. Hurry up. Cool, Definitely cool, cool. in like text speech, like shorthand. No one feels that tug. And the room disappears from around him. And he appears on the ship. Where am I? Surrounded by the people he knows. <sighs> two for two. Brilliant. Who else, who else did you bring on? Who else is here? Who are you? Us. No, Nolan. I transported Mateo, Heather, and I in one shot, and then you in the other. You okay? I'm gonna wipe some of the viscera off my shoe onto the floor. Just... <laughs> Peachy, yeah, he, how are you? He, I feel great. He is soaked in sweat. Like, his shirt is Do you want the damp. Coffee? Gonna offer no, I'm going to cut cup. down. Uh, I'm definitely going to want to sleep. Did you encounter up. the zombies, too? Oh, man, I wish. That would have been so much better than... <laughs> huh. Wait, something in this... What did you do? At least add you cause the zombieism. Should we empty the corpse closet, then? Oh, yeah, like once a week, at least. Well, it's currently full. So, bigger problems. There's a malevolent entity on that ship. Mm -hmm. I met it. Who's apparently Mariana's ex. Are you sure you were both talking about the same entity? There's a lot Did of malevolent you meet entities. A... You met another one? Oh, yeah, and it tried to, like, twist my soul into a pretzel. But that's fine. That's Might fine. Might be a Mariana's Luckily, other ex. 
I mean, Mar Mariana yeah. probably has a lot of X's. Um, we should probably go right now because she thinks that I'm still there because I pulled a little switcheroo. Uh, mm. So maybe we should get to the, the engines and go room. Uh, uh, Kibo pops up yeah. on Heather's screen and goes, I'm back. I brought the not friends. Why'd you bring the not friends? They followed me. Are they going to be where friends? Some stuff. Where, where'd you bring? Uh, what did you take? I don't know, but I'm going to go to the, uh, the that... helm. Sophie's yeah, let's, let's go. The door's locked. <laughs> uh, Teen's going to help uh, Heather. She doesn't know quite what they're talking about, but it's how she heard not friends and goes, hmm, okay. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, no attack. <laughs> Um, did Sophia reset her can alarm earlier? Uh -huh. <laughs> cool. It has not been knocked over since. Excellent. She's gonna like dead, like do whatever like locking internally yeah. to prevent the door from being opened. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then go uh, searching through to the mess hall real quick to make sure that guy is not around. Cool. Which probably he not, but he was aware of the can alarm and who knows if he's magical. He is not around. Okay. We haven't and accidentally go checked abducted. all of those crates carefully for trackers now. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, I will. I won't even make you roll for that. You you search those crates. You are paranoid. You will not find anything on those crates. Um. The rest of you. Now that the door is locked and <laughs> Sophia has gone to do something, you're not entirely sure what. Um. Yeah, Kibo's brought not friends. Um, yep. hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Heather's like kind of just responding of the like, what did you do? But also is walking uh, very rather briskly to the helm. Um, we'll mm -hmm. probably start running at some point. Yeah, uh, Tegan's right behind. Yep. We're in trouble, right? Yeah. Great. I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> oh, we may need your help, Nolan. Yeah, I'll be back. Gotta grab a couple things. Okay, I definitely thought that you meant you were gonna go take a nap or something. <laughs> if I could. There's no... Twice, so he's cutting back on caffeine. Rest for the wicked. Mm -hmm. You run to the helm. And... When you get there... You notice that, I say notice, it's pretty, pretty obvious at this point because you're looking out um, from what you can see and, and you can also see if you turn it on, you turn on like the radar that, that the ship has and there are people, maybe zombies, they don't look dead and rotted, but they are moving a little erratically, shall we say, um, are starting to climb over the ship. Oh, that's a and bad sign. There's a bunch more on the radar that you can Okay. Well um let's get this thing going. Hopefully they haven't sabotaged the ship instead of fixing it. And Heather's just mumbling this as she's going around like flicking switches and starting things up. <clears throat> Um, Kibo also, while you were kind of asking what Kibo did, uh, was just like, you told me to go into the surveillance system, so I, I went and I, I found some stuff, and I thought you might want it, so I brought it back, but they spotted me and mm. followed me. Mm. Sorry. No, I mean, you did the right thing. He sits and it's like, hmm. looks very proud of itself. <laughs> Yes, I did the right thing. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, let's let, yeah. let's put this up and see if we can, uh, you know, give give it some extra juice there and uh, you know warp nine and all that shit here. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, I'm not convinced let's... that the the, the uh, artifact's been fully charged, but you know what? Let's see what we can do. Mm-hmm. Um, given that you all are on the ship and there's a veritable horde outside, I'm going to do something similar to Baldur's Gate 3 and just, there's an environmental round <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just going to happen. Rounds. 
Yeah. But I want all of you to give me initiatives just so that we have an order to move through in the, uh... Mm-hmm. But the environmental round will happen at the end after everybody else goes. <laughs> and just because it's been so long, reminder, what are we rolling for initiative? Is it a d10 plus and Plus dex and wits. Okay. Would hand-eye coordination would not apply for initiative, Not it? for initiative, no. Yeah. What's your, uh, what do you add, Christine? Yeah, what's your dex and wits? What's your mod? The two of you. Seven. Six. Five. Okay. So, (laughs) the order is, uh, Nolan, Sophia, um, Tegan, and then Heather. And then the environmental round. (laughs) So, Nolan, what you doing? We're back. At least it's bulletproof. It doesn't button all the way anymore, though. I think it shrunk. I got it. Oh, okay, opens fine. Uh, he's gonna grab and put on his silks, his silk steel, out of his bag and grab his gun because it's there too. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Zombies don't count. Zombies don't count. It was easier when I didn't have the blinders. And he's gonna run back out to to everybody else. Cool. Yeah. <sighs> Sophia, um, you've you've looked around, uh, you've looked for the that tracker and haven't found anything. So what do you do next? Um, you know what? This probably had a bit of an armory on it, didn't it? She's gonna go there and look for some energy weapons. She would like um a big gun, a la what they're holding on the com- cover of Technocracy Reloaded type thing. Nice. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily have to be that strong, yeah. but. She's just looking for something yeah. because her taser has not yet been reloaded and she doesn't actually have any guns right now. And you technically, I believe you still have dots of requisitions I as do. as a thing. So I'm just going to let you have, have that. I have three dots of requisition background. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's absolutely a gun. Whatever you want. If you want to look up stats for that, um... There's That's probably something decision. in Technocracy re- Reloaded that would work. Gear, yes. Yeah, it is. But Let's you see. look up the stats for that, so that uh, we have those. And Tegan, what are you up to? Uh, Tegan's pressing go. Go fast, go strong, bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Um, it's higher low good for you. It's good for me. High is good for me. That's what I meant to say. Yep. Um, you you push go, and nothing happens. Shit. And Heather, your turn. Uh, and so Heather or er, Tegan just said shit. Yep. After doing, she pushed a button and then went shit. <laughs> Which is, I'm assuming, was supposed to be the make this thing move button. Yep. Okay, I want to troubleshoot. What, what do we have to reroute to make this thing go? Sure. Roll me. Um, what is that? Int and uh, either computers, technology, science, whatever you uh, want to throw at it. Technology uh, would be the best. Cool. Roll me that. Um, okay. I, difficulty of four. All right, that's great. Um, does my intelligence create a specialty apply? Sure. Cool. You said uh, difficulty of four. Yep. Alternatively, modification specialty for technology. Take your pick, whichever one works. Yeah. 
Okay. That's a lot of dice. <laughs> That's eight successes. Excellent. Um, Tegan pushed the wrong button. Oh, okay. Uh, Hedge's <laughs> gonna reach across and slam the correct button. Yep. And uh, the you hear that like that kind of revving noise that you get from uh, a truck that hasn't quite caught yet, like a gas engine, um, where it's like right that kind of. Um, be- before you flood the engine with gas kind of thing, but it catches and um, you hear a... I would like to slam back into my seat and put on a seat belt before we actually, before it fully engages. Cool, you can do that. Yay. Um, and the engines uh, light up. You're not sure that they should have made that truck sounding noise, but they did. Um, Just gonna hear and then they turned on. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the engines light up and you sit and um, you put on a seatbelt, which is probably smart. And we're going to have an environmental round. No. <sighs> so the the engines turning on just incinerated a bunch of them of uh, zombies. So that's good. I almost called them vampires. They're not vampires. They're honestly not vampires. That was just me. <laughs> misspeaking concern concern <laughs> at that slip of the tongue there what is a Jen. vampire but a zombie that takes better care of itself mm-hmm. it's true okay i'm just gonna do this mm-hmm. okay um Kibo pops up um, on the main screen um, and you can see a little uh, like download bar above his head and he's just moving the information to the main computer uh, that he took but he also goes uh... oh hey someone knocked off a like bar outside or something. I can see through the surveillance cameras. You want me to link you to the surveillance cameras? I can do that. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he will pull up the surveillance cameras that you can see in the hangar bay and you can see just all of these people crawling all over the ship and just kind of hitting it. They're not, they don't seem to be doing a ton of damage, but they are just whacking the ship. Some of them have hammers. We're gonna need a bigger corpse closet. (laughs) Not if we knock them all off when we go. That's true. Hopefully we can go with all the damage they're doing. Um, you do see that the, the engines, uh, whatever exhaust is coming out of the engines does seem to have incinerated a few um and they seem to be avoiding that area now and you have come into the hangar bay and the door is behind and so the the engines are kind of on the back pointing towards the door so you either have to figure out how to turn this thing around in this space which there may be not enough room for it or you can just try and reverse as fast as possible. Yeah, I think we're just gonna full on reverse. Cool. Uh, we're gonna go to Nolan first and then uh, come back around. Um, no alarms are going off yet. Well, that's good. That's great. Um, so I guess Nolan's gonna run up to the um, to the bridge. Mm-hmm. All right. What I miss. Sorry, it was a little cold. Can I, as a free action, just point at the screen? Yeah, absolutely. Got some uh, zombies. Are they all dead? I didn't think to ask them 
myself. No. I mean, if you want to go outside, grab the intercom. Is there, is, an, is there an intercom? We have an yeah. intercom. I don't know if it's an outer com. But... Do I have an outer com? Sure. Yeah. I'll grab it. Oh my... Hello. Excuse me. Raise your hand if you're dead. Oh, they didn't have life patterns. Yeah. Oh, we could have just said that. Wait, do they have mind patterns? I don't know. They all he raise their mind. <laughs> do some of them get thrown off by them raising their hand? A couple, yeah. Yes. Well, you hey, that actually worked, Nolan. Good. Does the thing have a stereo system? I assume yes. I gotta work on something. Just don't, don't die in the next twenty seconds. I'm gonna start preparing an effect. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. You yeah. could have Beastie Boys them. Now I've got something <laughs> even better. Oh nice. Uh, Jen, Sophia. I'm gonna start preparing a mind effect. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, cool. Sophia, you have a BFG, big fucking gun. Sweet. I can't find any stats. Because they okay. all have like very specific, like neat things. They don't have a uh, generic energy weapon thing. Oh, you want a plasma be... cannon? I got, I got oh you. Gosh. Cool. Yeah. But I did find something I really, really want from this list. <laughs> uh huh. It's called What's a that? vape. Uh huh. Don't vape uh -huh. on camera. It literally it works as a vape pen. If you don't have anything loaded into it that's toxic or biologically devastating. I it's code with something where you take, you can take it into your mouth. That. And it automatically, um, maybe I did, but I don't remember, um, cause I don't have it listed, but you can take stuff, what's in it into your mouth and what's coating the outside will prevent it from harming you. And then you can breathe it out into somebody else's face Ooh. and administer that's whatever strange. it is to them. That um, sounds familiar. Like, so remember you, you sorted out your requisitions and I know the, the, the can the pause was, I'm pretty sure like I heard you say vape too, cause it sounded fucking cool. Don't actually remember That's now cool. because I didn't go back yeah. through the whole other video to see if I had it or not. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have it. Yeah. We'll just... Yes! It was. If it wasn't in that other video, then it's in uh, when you were looking through the infirmary equipment and I told you you could basically have whatever you wanted in terms of requisitions. Excellent. Um, it's it there. is my it stealth there. attack. Yeah. Cool. Just pulling up plasma Are you rifle. So happy? <laughs> um, but yeah, I get so... big guns and the deadly things. Yes, you do. You have all <laughs> the fun things. So yeah, Kelly, you have plasma cannon stats. Working on it. There's a lot of plasma cool. in this book. I mean, fair. You used to be in the weapons section, man. You used to be cool. Right, right. Uh, Christine, did you check Mage Twenty? I did, and they didn't. I couldn't find where that would be in there. I found the wonder section. It'd be there. Should be one under guns. Well, I was I'm trying looking. to look up like weapons, Wait. and the index didn't really show me where weapons would be in the book. Probably equipment. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean, page four fifty-five is like some weapons, and four fifty-five. Ish. Like, like those are the weapon charts or in yeah, that area. Sh it should theoretically be on there. And it might just be that I can't fully focus on it because I'm also trying to run game, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't found it myself. I found a bunch of grenades a, and stuff, though. They've got a rocket launcher on there. That's probably pretty similar. Uh, oh, they've got yeah. a chain gun. They've got uh, technocracy sidearms. So they've got a... Uh, you'd be looking at the Biggs Mjolnir Mark IV, probably. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What page Which, is that? Uh, that is 452. 452. Uh, it is 10 20. dice of damage. Yes. Uh, and for four. And it would probably do ag. Yeah, we'll just call it that. Like, I good. think that's basically what one of the old guns was. Mm -hmm. What's a bowl in Mark 13? I'll look that up too. There's a lot of durability charts in here. 
Yeah. So yeah, just um, we might we might figure out a better option later, but for now, just take that gun and it does ag. It was a mul mjolnir. Mjolnir. Um, ah, yeah, the the it third one. A bit odd. Yeah. Or yeah. All right, we're just gonna like. It's a gun, but it does energy damage instead of punching holes in the side of the ship. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Ah, uh, yes, chat. Zombies brought hammers to a Mjolnir Mark IV fight. <laughs> good, good. I mean, if it's Mjolnir Mark IV, it's, it's a hammer, right? It's just a different kind of hammer? Time to <laughs> drop the hammer. That's a lot of damage. Right? Yep. And a lot of range. Yep. Yep. It's that, a BFG. That, that's the joke. I'm pretty sure the conceal it N just means none. <laughs> no ability to conceal. Yep, yeah, N is no concealment. Yep. yep. No, it means nice. it means nuh uh. Uh uh. <laughs> nuh uh, nada. Nice. It means noise. Yeah. Noise. Oh I didn't know it's got T. Oh, that's trench coat. Yeah, I was looking one down. What is that trench coat? <laughs> yeah, T is trench coat. Like literally, not yeah. not joking, because this yeah, yeah, game yeah, from the nineties. N equals N A. T is trench coat. J is jacket. P is pocket. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And okay. Yeah. You PW have the G. Um, Wait. Note number four. Maybe use two handed for additional plus one damage die. What is this thing? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, we're not going to use that one just yet <laughs> until we figure it out. But huh, fighter oh, jet. <laughs> I guess it works as a hammer as well as a gun. I guess so. <laughs> All right. You have a BFG. It, it's B and it's F and it's, it's G. It's a BMM4. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what you doing with it? It's your turn. I'm gonna be ready for if anything co tries to come in, and then I'm gonna shoot it. I'm probably gonna go join the others, because I think that's where we will find camera feeds so that I can be deployed to the correct spots to deal with anything that might try and poof into existence in our ship. Mm -hmm. If they do that yeah. sort of thing here, I don't know. Right? Yeah, it's better to be prepared. Um, Let me just double check. Hmm. Well, yeah, for a change, I'm writing these things down and what book and what page they're on. <laughs> on my character. Good call. Sheet. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. So, you head back to. Um, to the bridge, the helm, so that you can see camera feeds. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a fun thing about that hit mark. Um, <laughs> there was a fun thing about that hit mark. You guys killed him. Um, he followed you from the deep sea exploration zone. He was heading out to attack you when everything exploded, so he just latched onto the ship. <laughs> Oh my god, that's fantastic! And then he was, and then he was in the null zone where tech doesn't work. Ha! So he couldn't do anything till you got out of the null zone. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> See, I think things through, and then it's like, well, nope. <laughs> uh, anyway, it is Tegan's turn. Perfect. Uh, I think Tegan's gonna take a look at them all outside, and I have a very Stupid idea, Jen. And it's sure. a big idea. <laughs> but I have this rote mm -hmm. called it, or no, arc. My arc rote. Uh huh. <laughs> I would like to take all of the like light electricity in the ship, use combination of data, forces, and matter to then just transport that energy to the outside of the ship and then have it all arc around all of the zombies on the you're, ship. You're, you're hypercharging the, the shielding? Yep. 
I am hypercharging the shielding. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think the dilithium can take much more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh, Tegan. <laughs> Make it coincidental by spraying a little bit of water on the hole first. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, don't worry. Tegan's in trouble. Oh, oh yes, she is. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> first, how are. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> well, what she's how? going to do is she's going to go onto the computer system. Yep. She's going to access the power from the lights, the lighting system. Okay. Yep. She's going to reroute it to the to reflect onto the outside of the hull. Mm -hmm. And using combination of of that and it, being able to see on the camera using data to be able to basically like drone strike have it discharge and try and ground itself on these zombies. Cool. Cool. Please roll me enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And you are going to be at a difficulty of We're going to say six. Okay. Possibly should be more, but we're going to say six. I am I am spending a willpower to make ship go not boom. Um, <laughs> Probably a good plan. Yes. Five successes. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta look a thing up. <laughs> Not that. That's, that looks good. Hmm. Yep, okay. Um. Okay, that goes off. Are you putting this into power or duration? Do you want it to be one zap or do you want it to perhaps be a lesser zap and but then continue over uh probably continue over until we get away because she i think she's like this the, i don't think i'm gonna get all of them with one zap so if i can have a multiple thing so that they just have difficulty trying to move on the hull and get to us and try and whack into it that uh okay she'll do that cool so you're trying for a scene yeah i'm trying for a scene So that would be. Why is it turn? Do, do, do. So that would be th three power. So. I think. How many successes did you get? Five. I got That's five. what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Roll me 11 dice. Oof! Difficulty of six. Um, great. As you're doing that, Heather, what are you doing? Um, mumbling about how useful it would be to have a very large windshield wiper at this current point in time. Um, and then is going to focus on getting us out of here. So is going to start reversing the ship. Cool. Yeah. Uh, are you reversing essentially as fast as possible? Uh, as fast as possible that will not break anything. Cool. Um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, that is fine. 
I am technically going to put this. So basically, we're going to go through this next round. Um, so Nolan, you can do whatever you're doing. Tegan, okay. this is your. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it, Robin. It's fine. Um, Tegan, you basically spent the round setting that up so it's going off in this this round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then Heather, you are essentially okay. ramming the doors in this round. Yeah. So basically, okay. if if she has to take a round to like get things, uh, it's it's kind of like the ship. Then... Yeah, this is the ship getting up to ramming speed, sort of. Like you kind of yeah. just have to. You're moving and not that. Like you don't have that much room to maneuver, so yeah. it's not like you can build up to 88 miles per hour. Uh, no. Like, <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of like you you charge the ship, and then you're gonna see a bunch of lightning go off, and you're like, oh, now now is the time. Now is the time to do this. <laughs> yeah, because that seems um, like it will be very helpful. <laughs> but yeah, uh, da, 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 da. do you want me to do like a helmsman roll or anything, or just? Um, we will do that in this next round. Cool. Um, Nolan, what are you up to? We're in a realm of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? You're going to hate me because this is a coincidental effect. Flipping through the uh, computer's uh, digital music file, uh, I'm going to sound out of mind for Pulse, put on the thriller music, and make all the zombies dance. Nice. Do it. Uh, so that's difficulty of probably five. Then? No, six. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Must have been willpower. That's two successes, which means it lasts for a round. But all they have to do is stand up. Yep. Um. Don't don't. So yeah. Don't don't. The, uh, I'm gonna say the um, uh, royalty-free version of Thriller comes on, <laughs> and and plays. Funk, funk, funk. Uh, just like you hear the the bass starting over over the uh, the speakers, and the zombies start to stand up. Some of them fall off because they were on the side of the ship. Um, but there are some that have solid ground to stand on and they start doing the doing the dance uh, on the ship. Uh, and Sophia, it is your turn. You're back in the in the in the bridge at the helm and the thriller music has just come on and um, Tegan's doing something at one computer and Heather's like revving up the ship and seems to be starting to reverse it. I'm just going to hang out and maybe pull up the security feeds on another console. Just keep an eye on the whole interior of the ship, exterior, One, two, and, three, four. and just be ready to go <laughs> um, if something happens. But in the meantime, I think she's learned how to handle the hurry up and wait attitude of like military and stuff of just, okay. She's ready to go. She's got her big ass gun. Until she's needed, she will just rest. Fair enough. That's probably a good attitude to take right now. Um, Cause she's gonna rely on the others to get us out of here. But mm -hmm. if we do it with a hitchhiker again, yes, she's you ready. Are ready. <laughs> you are ready. To do some damage control. Yes. You pull up the security feeds and just give me a like perception and alertness check. Uh, difficulty of six because you're mostly focused on what's happening around you, but there are security feeds for other areas. Four successes. Mm. Ah, yes. Tens, 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 tens. Great. Um, so, yeah, you flip through a couple of security cameras as you're. Um, just kind of patiently waiting and monitoring things. And you... Uh, 
catch the interior of um, of the like lobby area. <laughs> did you actually find a? I can't. Royalty you need to ask. You need to ask to use it. But yeah, I did find uh, a royalty free one. So close. <laughs> I will share it in the chat though. <laughs> nice. Um. And so you catch the the security feed of like the the lobby area, um, which now is completely empty, except for uh, a form you recognize as Mariana of Balador holding her head as she's like curled up on the ground. And above her is this black aura. Uh, so our host is curled up on the ground in the lobby, holding her head with a black aura above her. What did you guys do? <laughs> is what? this what you found? Told you about the dark entity. Mariana's ex. I she ain't have much of a prize it. herself, actually. That. Useful, but let's go. Mm-hmm before it turns its attention to us. And let's hope it does not get back out into the rest of the world. And Tegan, you let off this lightning and the shields shimmer and pulse in not not unlike the um, everything else that has pulsed in this place because there's a lot of pulsing going on it's that sort of place it is the pleasure dome after Mm -hmm. all Mm -hmm. Uh, but in a much more comforting way than everything else Mm -hmm. and um, this almost bubble of just lightning um, kind of bulges out from one side and then pops as every zombie on the ship is hit with this lightning, this electricity. And Heather revs the engine one more time and you shoot backwards towards the door. Um, Buckle up! <laughs> yippee ki yay, mother buckets! But you don't hit the door. And you're not in the Pleasure Dome anymore. As Tegan's paradox goes off. And I'm going to call game there. So you have to wait to find out where they've ended up. No! (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Tegan. <laughs> oh. When I first rolled your paradox, you had 15 points of paradox going off. <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! And then you decided to coat the entire ship in lightning using data as well. And I was like, I'm just adding it. There's probably only like one dice of paradox at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. more. So Oh man. So uh yeah, you don't have any paradox anymore. You're you're cleared. You're Yay. Cleared. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, how much? So it was fifteen dice. And then it was another uh, three, like five? five. It was probably about 20 dice of Paradox that you had at the, by that's the end of that. That's fine. And, that's, and I mean, that's because I didn't tell it to go off sooner mm-hmm. because this was fun. <laughs> yeah, this was fun. This was fun. Yeah. But she, ah. she kept using data so um yep. uh, uh, we kept doing it i kept and doing big it. things and in front of mateo mm-hmm. who currently counts as a sleeper ha ah. man 
fuck around with that. Mm-hmm. Why does he always mm-hmm. have yeah. to ruin our fun? Damn it, Mateo. Damn, Mateo. <laughs> Oh, poor Mateo. I know. But uh, yeah, you'll have to tune back in in either November <laughs> or December whenever we get to uh, the next episode. We'll figure that out. Um, definitely not in October, though. And I will figure out where you guys went. I know where you guys went, sort of. But I have to figure out how to describe it. So <laughs> that's what why. I say except you're welcome, guys. I got us away from the ship. That's a very fun yeah. way to put us wherever you need to put us. Right? 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 Just let yeah. Tegan rack up Paradox again. It's great. It's perfect. Yeah, it's it's so helpful to me. You're welcome, Jen. I'm just trying yeah. to go for your title as Paradox Queen. You know, Paradox Princess. Paradox Princess has a very nice ring to it. You are going to get uh, five points of experience. Five points Whee! of experience? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh... Oh. Got eight now. Got nine. What can I spend it on? Ooh. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this this was this was great, Jen. Good. I'm this glad. Was great. It was just I very. Know. What to do with nineteen fun. XP? Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's been accumulating. Um, Buy a sphere. Do I get any of my um, willpower back from being an innovator? I don't know if that is it. Yeah, is it sure. nature or demeanor that you get back? Nature. 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 Ooh, my nature's machine. Hmm. And my nature's trickster. I wonder what I got. <laughs> bow, bow. Wait, wait. Yeah, my yeah, nature's yeah. monster. Did I do that yeah. by suffi- suffi- sufficiently horrifying that guy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's say. Let's say yes. <laughs> And uh, Tegan, you can also get it for machine. Cool. Cool, because I had I'm one gonna... willpower left after that game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, especially your last move was like you communing <laughs> with the machine, <laughs> just yep. being like, oh. Florence? Yeah. Good job, Florence. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Yay, Data 4. It's so much fun. Yay. I know, it's so much fun. I love it. It's why Tegan's racking up all this paradox. Uh-huh. It's because it's so much fun. Uh huh. So far, it I have one really dot of paradox is. according to my sheet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't, you haven't done much, <laughs> like in terms of racking up paradox. I'm generally doing fairly coincidental type stuff. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, I it's... think I also figured out that there was something going on that made everything more like in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, so you you got a little stuff. at the beginning, and then you were like, "Hmm, there's there's something going on here." Your infirmary also has been counting as a laboratory, so some of the stuff you've done in there hasn't garnered you paradox. Um, and uh, while you were in. Um, Mariana of Belarus hangar, the hangar specifically, uh, up until the end. So it was all while Sophia was in there. Um, you were you weren't gaining paradox for the things you were doing, whether it was because you were it was coincidental or because something else was happening. Nice. But well, then once once uh, the zombies came and you were like, hmm, we're we're running away now, then you started gaining paradox again. <laughs> GG Jen, GG. Yeah, yeah, and now the yeah. mystery continues because um, I will say because uh, I know it's been a while, um, but uh, the phrase "eater of souls" has been mentioned previously mm-hmm. um, as as a thing. Well, sort of mentioned. You don't really know what it refers to yet, but um, it was part of the. Uh, data that Tegan picked up from the deep sea exploration zone. Mm-hmm. That was one of the phrases. Yep. Um, and I'm trying to think of what else. Kibo has some more information, which is great. And you remembered the corpse closet. Also great. Never forget. I had forgotten the corpse closet until random reminded me and I was like, right, the corpse closet. We need to make that a t-shirt, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, just make me a logo for, for October. 
Yeah. Corpse Closet is a great band name. It really is. Yeah. It's really you, you, we're talking great. about the Corpse Closet, but I'm also remembering Corpse Waterball from Shorts of Nerd. And Corpse Water Dan. <laughs> yeah, and Corpse Water Dan. <laughs> what? It's just, it's a thing. I yeah, mean, you know. You know. Sort of Dan, lead, lead lead player of uh like star player in uh in the one sports ball game Corpse Waterball. Corpse nice. Waterball is fun for the whole family until it's not. <laughs> it's not your whole family. Yeah, basically. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um but yeah, that is that is it for tonight. I ended a little early because it was just too perfect. Right. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, yeah. But I Hope you had a good time. What? <laughs> I just looked over the private chat and just what? <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. All right. I can't tease them. Like um. That. But yeah. Uh. Let's do outros and Kelly. If you want to say anything, your your Patreon. Oh spiel. boy, do I want to talk about the Patreon and how much I love them. I love you, Patreon. If you're watching this right now on Patreon, know that I love you. We are deep. We're we're like like family. And I, as particularly, I need to thank our world building producer Soul Omen, uh, who is also known as Jade, the maker of monsters. I need to thank my mom, who's my actual family. So thanks, mom, for being a divine producer. That's really swell. You and Bob too. Uh, thank you to Precarious, who's basically an uncle at this point, uh, for being a funkle and a demonic funkle. And at that as a demonic producer thank you to the wizards of the patreon who are like extended family like cousins distant co second cousins once removed uh such as the ink goblin and tammy the forever cleric and of course our distant cousins enough that we could we could you know like we could exist inside of alabama and it wouldn't get weird uh the high council of the patreon uh, which is Taryn, Buddy, Amberthist, Raven with Bobbles, Karasha Urquhart, Chef Aladeth, LaRook, Sorcerer Sanguine, Mike Baxter, and Kaylin Whitebeard. You're all wonderful. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and uh, I can't wait to show you more stuff. Come to Dragonlance on Wednesday for some surprise reveals. Woo! That's what I got. Concern. Concern. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Um, But yeah, if... Uh... Oh, and I'm Kelly. Anyway. That's that's my outro. Hmm? That's and my outro. Kelly, that's your outro. Yeah, this is the full outro. Um, yeah. Christine, Amy, Robin, do you want to say where we can find you if you want? Well, you can find me over on twitch.tv slash Lady Liliana, as well as Dork Tales, um, where I stream mainly Guild Wars, sometimes Baldur's Gate now, but hang out with me on the weekend mornings. Or on various Indeed. social media platforms. Indeed. It's Amy, anything else you want to say as we head out? Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for running this, Jen. And uh, I have so many concerns for our party. But yeah, I'm Amy. I have been playing Heather. And uh, you can find me uh, here on Dork Tales or over at uh, twitch.tv slash paradoxical ghoul when I remember that I have my channel and actually stream. <laughs> uh, same. Same, same. Yeah and robin uh hello i'm robin i've been playing tegan our lovely paradox princess um and yeah you can find me usually here on dork tales um doing dorky things um including it's on a break now but the radiant citadel uh, is the game that i run it's such a good uh, game <laughs> thank you uh it includes these four wonderful players and then wonderful traz which i haven't seen him in the chat tonight so but love, Trez. Send you from, I send you love, Trez, whenever you listen to this, if you listen to this. Um, that game's all fun. And you can find me on... <laughs> I'm, I'll am i be honest. I'm not going to be streaming for the next few months on my own channel because I get one day off a week now for the next uh, several months. So uh, I'm going to use that day to sleep. Uh, but you can yeah. usually find me on Second Gen Gamer on Twitch. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok on those, which I use a bit more. Cool. So yeah. And thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys had fun. Uh, and as always, I am Jen. You can find me here on Dork Tales running this game or playing in several others. And there's more to come. Um, and uh, you can also find me with my podcast, uh, Paradox Mage the Ascension Podcast, where I talk about all these fun things about Mage. Um, then there should be 
an episode coming out this week if I can pull myself together in time. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're hoping. It's been a busy <laughs> month, so I might end up taking a, a week off, but we'll see. Uh, nice. Yes, and that's everything. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you all for playing. Love you all. You're very welcome. Thanks for playing. Bye, everybody.